in all the women I've ever slept with, not a single one has ever bitched or complained like you are bitching and complaining now. Sometimes you forget exactly how lucky you were to get fucked by me. Hello. Okay, I don't so I don't know if this is working. Let me try to get my friend up here. All right. So Okay, you can hear me? Okay, let's see. Let's see if this works. Ready? Um, can you see me? Yes. Okay. Yay. <laughs> it's working. My first live. Hello, universe and ghost that might be watching this. How's the volume? Is it like too loud? Here, wait, let me test this while you're here. I'm going to put on a video. Um, okay, here, let me know if, if this shows up when I do this. Um, let's see. Okay, let me... So you see that, let's see, let's see. So if I play a video, um, let's play like uh, this video. Okay. Oh, no, you're not gonna be so, okay. I, you know what, I thought this was gonna be a great show. Okay, hold on, there's gonna be feedback if I do that, so. How do I do this without feedback? Da, 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 da. Um, oh, if I mute my mic. You can't hear me. Okay, I said first live stream because there's going to be some issues. Um, so, okay. Tell me if you can hear the audio when I play it. Okay. Okay. No audio. Okay. Let me see. Um, settings. Audio. Hmm. Um. Um. Hmm.
uh, hmm, how would I do audio? Um, shoot. Speaker. Uh, let's see. What if I do? I really doubt this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try this. All right. Let me know if there's audio now. Question. Okay. <laughs> Which yes. What do you think the table to a man? Right. You take it serious. Yeah. Outside of sex. What what do you think she will bring? No, 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 I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you ever been in a relationship that you obviously have sex? But what does she bring to the table besides that? Tell me. Well, I'm not. But I'd like to know yours. Okay, well, let's go on the panel first. Oh, it's right. For me? Yeah. Okay, so I'm definitely supportive. I'm definitely ambitious, and I like to be a part. So it's probably working through my microphone. Um, I didn't think about this part, the audio part, sound, input, okay, well, um, I'm going to let this video play for a minute and I'm going to Google how to uh, work the audio. So you guys can just watch this. Not that like anybody's here, but <laughs> I'll be right back. Um. Part of your idea. So I can stay comprehensive. Yeah, I got my emotions sometimes and I want to say my opinion, but in the, like, overall, like I have really good intentions. I want to see you grow um, because if you grow, I grow. Um, obviously good sex, um, great communication, and I'm definitely adventurous. So I'm super down. I'm open-minded. I'm down. So I'm fun. And that's what I bring to the table. Okay. Uh, we mentioned no sex. Okay. No sex. Besides no sex. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm supportive. I'm ambitious. I'm adventurous. Um, I'm definitely open-minded, you know, to a lot of things. So yeah, I'm a good time. I'm a good time. Cool. Right. My answer is, I don't know. I don't know what I would bring to the table. If this is me, you like it, you don't, you know, let's find out. Let's figure it out together. Okay. I mean, you're keeping it real. I like that. You know, just being honest. Wait, you said you have a boyfriend though, right? Yeah, I do. Well, what would you do for him then? Oh, I, a lot of things. Do you want to know? <laughs> do you want to ask him? I'm asking you. I mean, you, you said I'm not sure what I bring to the table, and then I'm like, wait, aren't you in a relationship? Honestly, when I'm in a relationship, I'm not like, what am I bringing to the table? Is he happy if I do this? I don't question myself all the time. I'm like, this is who I am. I'm Maybe scared. today. But you, you know something interesting? Yes. When you were asked what you're looking for long term, you had a lot of your list of stuff you mentioned. But then when you're asked. When I you just said fun, good sex, and somebody who would like change with me and we both like grow together. Okay, so let's say you brought four things, but then when you were asked what did you bring to that person, then you're like, I don't know. Do you understand how there's like a confusion there? It's no, it's not confusing for me. I don't know if there's somebody else that's not as confused as you. All right, I'll be confused. I'll take that. <laughs> All right. So I think I went out to the table. I'm super motivated. Like you just want to be my man. You, just, you need the support system, and I'm all about my man. I support him. I encourage him. I motivate him. I push him. I'm there for him. I love him. I'm all about him as long as he's all about me. Okay, so you can't do your friend then? Yes. Does that include being a long-term sexual girl, though? Absolutely not. You already know that. <laughs> <laughs> then, then in that case, she does not support you, buddy. Stop it. I'm not going there. In that case, she does not support you. Okay. Well, for me, it's a best friend. I bring in perspective. I teach them. Um, also, with my current boyfriend, for example, I'm teaching him Spanish. Um, but definitely a best friend, somebody that you can rely on, that you can talk to, that you can play with, that you can just feel like yourself with no armory, you know? 
you can just relax and be yourself without the stress that goes on in the world. So no judgment. No judgment. Does he like? Right, so there's a type of unconditional love. Does he? Wait, you said unconditional love. There's a type of unconditional love because when it comes to friendship, when you have a friendship with someone, you love them for who they are, flaws and all. So you're telling me that your relationship is unconditional love? As of now, yeah, I would say so. Okay. All right, excellent. All right. <laughs> I believe that that's a fallacy. All of is conditional, especially on the female side, but that's okay. At some point, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's so if, you know, if, if, job. if you're saying definitely out of your experiences, then you're telling your life definitely because there exists unconditional love. I agree with you. Yeah. You have unconditional love from your mother, you have unconditional love from your brother. Yes. And if that's this family, exists, though. and that's if you haven't experienced it, then you would say it doesn't. That's, you know? that's, that's, that's I, 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 I'll ask you if you're married to somebody. Hypothetically, right? Mm -hmm. No changes when you marry somebody out three kids. Mm -hmm. He stops working, he stops talking to you, stops talking to you, stops basically being involved with you. Yeah. If you would still love this man, could you get that off? I would still love him, but I would definitely have to love myself more in order to leave and let them figure out their life. Because <laughs> a lot of times, women want men to change, but you. People don't realize that you can't make people change. People mm -hmm. have to go through their own process. And sometimes that process requires them to hit rock bottom. So if that person needs to go through their journey and you not being there is part of that and you do it out of love, mm -hmm. then that is necessary. And when that person is able to change and go back to you, you truly love them. You take them back because you know who you fell in love with. You know who that person is. And everybody has downs. Everybody goes through the past. Everybody has bad moments. You know. mm, yeah. All right, let me translate that woman East for you guys. Uh, basically, what she's saying is as long as you continue to be who you were when I first met you, then I will be I don't think she said that. I did but, not uh, say that. That is men's planning. Yes. You're changing my work. Yeah, well, and yeah. uh, basically, what I am saying is that I'm just translating because you said a lot there without really saying much. But what it really mm, it I heard a lot. I don't know about you. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. That's not what is unconditional love for you? It means when you love somebody. No, no for him, is, for him, for you, it, it, Mr. Fresh Bit. No, no, no. It's 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 very simple. There's no such thing as unconditional love. There's oh, there's there's conditions to everything in the world. And the reason why I had to say something was because men don't listen to that advice ever. Because women will say that to you. Oh, unconditional love, and I'm gonna love you whatever. As long as you make somebody outside you from know, yourself you know, responsible, it's gonna be a conditional love. You want to finish? Okay. So what I was saying was is that love is always conditional to some degree. As a man, you have to bring something to the table for a woman to love you. Now, I get what you guys are saying, the Disney but, fairy tale, but that's not how the world works. I think that's what you've Can learned you in off? life. Seriously, you're stuck right now? Hey, do you feel like I'm cutting you, you off? Yeah, I think yeah. this was like you're a conversation, not a monologue. No, 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 no. Did you not ask a question? Sorry? Did you not ask me a question? Yeah, so I was asking you what love, is unconditional love. love. And then you cut me off twice. I counted it. Are you mad? Hey, listen, not at all. Learning because I have, I'm under the impression that you just got like super mad. Listen, end of the day, I told you. Uh, we have three ladies on the couch. Oh, well, I don't mind leaving you know this show Goodbye. if I'm not right. allowed to Goodbye. talk. Goodbye. Oh, Goodbye. Oh, Goodbye. Oh, Thank you. Okay, bye. You gotta respect the platform and not cut people off. I'm myself. Thank you. Okay. Well, go yourself, ahead. Can you can take yourself outside. I will. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Trey, Thank you, Trey. Uh, Thank you, Trey. All, All right. right. Okay, so one down. <laughs> one down. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you know what? I thought this was going to be a great show. That one holds the truth. So mm -hmm. let's just keep an open, open mind, mm -hmm. you know, listen mm -hmm. to each other and be willing to also change our own perspectives mm -hmm. because that's what actually makes a good dialogue. Mm -hmm. So oh. let's keep it on that note. I, I, do, I do agree with you, but you did say that there is a conditional love. But he, he, you said something else that said there isn't, because you said if he wasn't loving you, but he wanted to love you, you would go away. No. Out of love. But no. it would be out of love. Um, just, 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 uh, let me know if I paraphrase. I want to make sure I understand. Yeah, sure. And essentially, it's for fine. you, if you love somebody, sometimes you have to leave them because it's the compassionate thing to do so that they can figure themselves out. 
and you're doing that out of love. Is that correct? When you try to change someone, it puts on more stress for them, the feeling of having to change because you are disappointing your loved one. So sometimes people have to take their own journeys. Mm -hmm. And for that, sometimes you have to leave out of love for them to figure themselves out. And that is okay. It's completely normal. It's just like when you leave your house, your mom, because you got mad at her, and then you go and you figure yourself out, and then you come back. And that's an explanation, a hypothetical of a teenager that has to go back to the house. But if you're talking about someone that you're married to, as you said in your example, you have three kids with them and blah, 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 blah. Mm. Then definitely, if you want to raise your kids in a good way and your person is not in a good mental space and they need to figure their, their, themselves out, then definitely you need to let them go mm. and wait for them in case they they want to change because it's, it's a personal choice. You can't change people. No, but hold on, but hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Because, right, if you are a mother, and your son does something crazy, you still love him. Of if course. your husband is it that unconditional love? Yeah, that, that's a mother and son. But if your husband cheats on you, does, does a bunch of crap to you, are you gonna love him and take him back? Probably not. So that's not unconditional um, love. It does exist though. JC ch cheated on Beyonce. You're aware of it, right? Yeah, I'm aware. She took him back. Yeah. Why? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies, I think she's been in the last episode. She cheated with him. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I mean, them, I right? mean, I mean, you want to uh, handle this? You know what? Listen, there's some women who understand that there's things that matter more in life than whether or not your man or Some people believe in legacy. Some people build an empire. She knows that if she probably left the man, everything that they were striving for together would probably just not work out and they'd have to do things apart. Right. So sometimes you sacrifice. That's not necessarily an indication of unconditional love. Yeah, it not. just means like, you know what? I'm going to tolerate this because I believe that the thing that we're working for is more important. And I would also say this. I'm not mad at you. You have your ideas. You have your perception. No, of there's no reason to be mad. But I would also say, as you get older in life, you start to realize that there are conditions and there are aspects. Whether it's marriage, mm -hmm. whether it's love, it's like if you don't hold up your end to the bargain and it goes on long enough, I gotta go do this. And you can say, "Oh, I still love you, and I'm doing this so it can help you change. You need to realize rock bottom." But from the man's perspective, it's like you're bailing because I'm not doing what you need me to do, and you don't love me unconditionally. It was based off of whether or not I met those um, needs. Yeah. I think that's just one perspective. Sure. Um, definitely there's many perspectives to that. If you talk about marriage, then you have vows. And if you break those vows, then it's kind of like breaking love. But uh, when you have those vows and you say to love do us part, sickness and death and whatever, what you're saying is you're staying with that person even though you know there will be disagrees, disagreements and mistakes. And the thing is, you are promising to work it out. When you cannot work it out, that's when you get a divorce, right? You're breaking your vows. You're basically falling on your own ways because you are deciding to do so. It does not mean that you one day from another decide, I'm not going to love that person anymore. We are all humans, you know? People still love, even though they understand mm. that they have to leave each other for the greater good. Because you don't want to raise a kid with two parents that are constantly fighting or that simply cannot get along anymore because of the different perspectives and views. Okay, but when quick. you get married, that's what you're promising to do. You're promising to figure it out together. Go ahead, that that sounds great, but women initiate over 80% of the divorces. But, you know, it is what it is, right? So no. I want to... And say something here. It is not a debate about women against men. I think that's something that it feels. I feel it in the table. Like it's, 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 here's the thing, though. Your feelings are irrelevant to fact. It's, but I'm not talking about feelings. Mostly, I'm talking about the fact that we are all humans, and humans have feelings, and you're most like mostly an emotional being. More than you want to think that you are a logical being, you're a highly emotional being. Okay, and uh, you might want to deny that, but the truth is, you just had an altercation with somebody else, told them to leave out of emotion. No, out of principle and fact. She cut me off twice, and then she could, and then we said, hey, one more time, and then she did it again. And after we warned her, so... Yeah, it's and when she left, you can, you can take yourself home, and that's, yeah, that's an emotional reaction. No, listen, it's a fact reaction. She can leave, physically get up, um, and leave. Because I'm talking I, about the afterwards. Don't cut me off. Once again, see... I told her the rules. She 
the producer. I told oh. you many times. See, you're talking about girls have have hearing and they, they don't pay attention, right? Mm -hmm. I told her before the show, mm -hmm. if you talk over monitoring, the rules is you'll get booted out. And what happened? She didn't follow the rules. It wasn't emotional. We warned her. I told her to leave. And she asked me the question too, which is funny. Yeah. Like so she really asked me to find conditional, uh, unconditional love or conditional. Like what? Okay. And then it cut me off twice in the same sentence. I kept going. I kept going. Based on what you guys have described, I understand your part. And I completely understand her part. And I think that you guys may have taken her part a little too personally and not really taken into detail what she was saying. We but simply took her, her accusation, said prove it, and she could not prove it. There's no feeling. It's simply prove that we're misogynistic. We played the video even. There was nothing in there that was misogynistic. We, we played it twice. And we have uh, definitions on everything. We don't operate on black. We don't operate on gray areas. Black or white. Misogyny is the hatred of women. Where did we hate women? No, and I understand you guys. It wasn't 100% misogyny, but it was like a certain degree. It was a certain degree. Well, what part? The part where you said, oh, let her listen to me talking to but that wasn't a hatred oh. of women. that's not hatred of women it's not hatred i mean that it's, was just a, it's part a where natural it, reaction to it. you were, you were i mean makeup, why right? why are you gonna you were makeup okay well, well in, in my in my oh, opinion no, 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 no. you were makeup better correct anybody wears makeup okay are you understanding this which you know what that means okay see everyone knows what misogyny is but Okay, so, sorry guys, I'm still figuring this out. I think I might know how to do the screen thing with the video um, now. Let me try. Oh, oh, uh. oh my god, I figured it out. Okay. 
Oh, can I really? Oh, oh, sexy. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay. So, DBO uh, Maxo, uh, short term bang, the attractive guy, and long term married, the rich guy. Okay, hold on. Now, this is what I have to do. I have to go in here. And change this to that. A guys, I'm doing it. I'm doing the thing. I'm doing the thing. Okay, so sorry, I wasn't here for this. So, um, is my microphone too loud? Just turn it down sit a little bit. Okay. Hey, yo, I figured it out, guys. Oh, my God, I'm so proud of myself right now. Give me a little clap. <laughs> Round of applause for Gypsy. Okay. So... Let me, all right, so I wasn't there, so let me see. I think this was about, um, I think what I wanted to get at here was the, um, um, oh my God, I'm blanking. Oh, um, <sighs> fail unconditional love and what did they talk about being friends with your significant other too well, let me see um but definitely a best friend somebody that you can rely a on best friend yeah to, this is what i think i wanted to talk about feel like yourself with no armory you know you can just relax and be yourself without the stress that goes on in the world. So no judgment. No judgment. Does he write there's, there's, there's a type of about unconditional about love. Does he, when you said unconditional love? There's a type of unconditional love because when it comes to friendship, when you have a friendship with someone, you love them for who they are, flaws and all. So you're telling me that your relationship is unconditional love? As of now, yeah. Do you see how Myron, Myron's the host on the left side of the screen. He was like, wait, unconditional love? As soon as she brought it up because like, <laughs> he just like waits for the women to say things that he's just gonna like tear apart. Literally, this whole show is like, let's invite a bunch of females on the show, most who they are going to assume are pretty much kind of like, I don't wanna say like bimbos, but like, I don't know. And this is what I'm saying the hosts are assuming. They're like purposely inviting girls on the show who they assume are kind of just like brainless, like not very deep thinkers. And they're going to pose them with these questions and um, questions which they have um, questions which will leave the girls to um oh, here's how a better way to word it questions that can really only um have predictable answers i guess so like most of the girls answers to the questions that they choose are pretty predictable so the hosts are already like locked and loaded with comebacks and like sometimes insults and um opposing viewpoints to 
throw right back at them. And I'm sure most of the girls have watched the show before, so they're, I'm assuming they expect that. But, I mean, if, you, if they've never thought about these things and they're being put on the spot, like, I know even just from being on a YouTube live stream with 100 people watching and I've been in, like, small debates I felt like I've been put on the spot and I'll rewatch it and think, oh man, I could have said this so much better or why didn't I think of that to say or, oh, that came off wrong. They probably misunderstood me or, oh, I totally misunderstood or I didn't hear that person. So when you have tens of thousands of people watching and you're on a channel with over a million subscribers um, and the audience is mostly a bunch of hateful, really judgy men (laughs) um, who think they're like shit and they just hate women and are judging every single thing about you. Like I'm sure it's kind of hard to come up with like your best answer every single time so the guys pretty much just make the girls look dumb and then they use this as like an example of all modern women and it's like dude no like seriously i wish i had a show Um, I know they're just going to say, why do girls have to do everything that guys do? It's like, but I really wish I could do like a show in opposite of this. Like me and another female host invite a bunch of like, like clueless douchebag frat boys onto the show. And we ask them a bunch of questions that we know the answers to that. Like we have already predicted their answers to. And we, like, confront them with all these, like, theological ideas that we've thought out. So we're, like, three steps ahead of them already. And they're just, like, left speechless. And we have all these, like, funny sound effects to embarrass them. And there's, like, 10,000 girls watching live, like, insulting them, just throwing live insults at their appearances at their personalities like that's that's what these guys are doing to these girls like i don't know okay anyways if you don't know what this channel is this is fresh and fit and that is pretty much a synopsis for you it's um to me it seems like a bunch of butt hurt entitled guys um Yeah, and like kind of in my intro or in my description box, it's just really what it reminded me of was like going back to elementary school when it's like, boys versus girls, you can't play with us, you're a girl. (laughs) Like literally, that's what it reminds. It is so opposing. Like for me, I just don't understand why it can't be like, sure, you want to like self-improve men and how they value themselves and you know to be strong and confident and learn how to talk to women and respect women actually respect women not this bullshit this is how to disrespect women which they literally argue if you want to um like have a real female or like get a real relationship you have to disrespect for disrespect for (laughs) disrespect her and put her down for her to respect you, um, which is just crazy. And then they turn around and say, oh, when we say that you have to put a girl down and that women deserve less, we actually just mean that their egos are so high. So we have to, um, you know, challenge them. And I'm like, okay, sure. Like, that sounds like a real nice answer. But when you like, are going out here and saying, 
give women less. Women deserve less. You have to put women down for them to want you. Like, and then you, you, um, argument with the females or saying, oh, it's all semantics and it's how you say it. It's not what you said. It's how you say it. It's like, okay, well, dude, you're like literally saying, put women down. You're telling hundreds of thousands of men to put women down if you want them to respect you and that women deserve less. Modern women deserve less. And then when women confront you with it, it's like, oh, well, of course you say it's how you said it, not what you said. It's like, no, it's what you said. But you're saying that it's, you're saying that it actually, (laughs) you're saying that what you said is actually saying something else. So it's actually like, Oh my god, that's so confusing. I hope that made sense, but they're kind of like opposite of what like the girls are saying, accusing them of what they said, exactly what they said is wrong. And they're like, no, it's not what I said, but it's how I said it is what I really mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not explaining it right, but I hope that makes sense. Because women usually say, it's how you said it, not what you said. But now it's like the opposite. She's like, it's what you said. And he's like, no, it's how I say it, though. Anyways. Um, okay, I hope you didn't hear that. Because I just did like a, lo- a loud burp. Oh, let me turn my camera on. Um, um, hello. So... Sorry, I'll sing this all out. Okay. Um, so, um, um, but, um, um, um so what was I talking about? The show or something? I don't know. I lost my train of thought. So let's just continue. Uh, I would say so. Okay. All right, excellent. All right. <laughs> I believe that that's a fallacy. All love is conditional. Oh, sorry. Okay. I do remember what I was going to say. Okay. So this is what I was going to say. Oh, actually, I'm going to leave it like this. Sorry, guys. Need a stream yard. Need a stream yard and live live streaming so this is what i was gonna say i so sure like that's great you want to self-improve men and give men confidence and teach them how to be strong and talk to women and how to be in a relationship and how to deal with breakups yada 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 that's great seriously like i i think that's very needed you know um Lots of guys grow up with fathers or they just see all this stuff on the news and the media and they're confused. And so it's great to have like strong, healthy male role models. But like, I just believe a lot of these messages, one, are not healthy at all. I think they're self-damaging to young boys and men and in the future, damaging to women but not only that um I just don't understand why it has to be so opposing like why can't it be 
okay, men have our struggles, men go through this, and that's it. Why does it have to be so much hating on women and opposing everything to women, blaming everything on women? Like, why can't it be men have their struggles? Women also have a lot of struggles instead of belittling and demeaning and just totally um god my now that i'm like live i words are leaving my brain but just like invalidating our struggles and what we go through or or belittling like our jobs in relationship or in relationships and just in society and like what we bring to the table, what we do for each other. Like, why does it have to be so imbalanced and one-sided? That's that's my biggest problem with these red-pilled podcasts, I guess. I, I'm new to this whole manosphere world. Like, I just discovered this the other day, I guess, because I was do, doing Johnny Depp content. And the mainstream media is categorizing Johnny Depp as a misogynist and sexism. And, you know, on, he's like being grouped in with the conservative right wing side for some reason, because the media has to politi politicize everything, which is total bullshit. I was actually going to do a video on that. So I guess because of my interest in like that whole Johnny Depp trial, um, I got a recommendation for a channel called Just Pearly Things, who had Andrew Tate on it, who was just arrested, and now I'm in this whole manosphere red pill rabbit hole, which is just a lot, so that's why I'm doing this live stream, to get this all off my chest and talk about it, and um, yeah, so let's keep going. I'm going to bring up another video. Give me a moment. <clears throat> okay, let's do um Sorry, one second. All right, let's do this one. second da 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 little intermission music okay um sorry here it is here it is here it is Okay, I just have to get to the, um, the right timestamp. So, yes, okay. One hour, 35 minutes. Hi. Oh. Okay, here we go.
All right. Wait, hold on. Sorry, I have to do the audio thing again. Okay. Um, so why did I do that? Let me try again. Willing to date and how you um okay. Hopefully you guys can hear that. True. Like, oh, you're 31. Yeah, you just missed the cut. Yeah, now I feel yeah. like at 32, guys really start getting into who they are as a man. I, I feel like we're used to yeah. We are used to yeah. Natalia, yeah. you're 25, beautiful. Yeah. You know, I'm putting you on the same level God. as a Miss USA oh contestant, and then also the beautiful <laughs> model influencer. Fosh Posh over here. I'm putting you in that category. Yes. Beautiful, lovely, great worker, amazing, learning how to read, killing it. <laughs> <laughs> what's the oldest you would date and what's the youngest you would date? And you're 25, so go ahead. So the oldest I've dated was 32, but I was 21 at the time. Um, and then the youngest I would date, I would, oh, honestly, boy. I would date somebody who's like 27. Honestly, from where I'm at. Okay, so only a couple the years old. 27-year-olds I've met. Okay, Not so all 27 again, year olds I want to bring value here to the men out there here because we, we have hundreds of thousands, if not millions. I'm gonna of eat a snack, so I'm gonna turn off my camera. Why? Like, what would you say to your girl if she's like, "Yeah, I'm um, 25 and my boyfriend's 24, or my boyfriend's my age." Like, what would you say? Like, each Black Lemur says Nat is insufferable but cute. Yeah, she's all right. I've seen her like I've seen her I've seen her up close. She's 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 a little chunkier. She's a little chunkier um, in person, y'all. She's a little chunkier in person. Like, he is not one to talk. Else. I'm not saying she's fat, but she's not as yeah, just again, I've seen her I've seen her up close and personal twice now. Which of you, what would you say? Dude, you're fat. And why are you like judging a 25-year-old woman? Who literally, like, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with her appearance. Why do you care to put your opinion out there? Why do you think it matters, first of all? Because it doesn't. And even if it did matter, like, why would you put it out there? Like, it's just, it's totally unnecessary. And, like, I've met guys that like a little extra, like, junk in the trunk. <laughs> they don't like super skinny girls. They like a little, like, thickness, like a little... And, and she's not even that. Like, I just... It just grosses me out that, like, there's old men, like, actually sitting on the computer and a comment says, Oh, she's cute, though. And some old man's like, eh, nah, she's pretty fat. No, she's not fat, but she's chubby. Yeah, this 25-year-old chick, like, I definitely wouldn't date her. It's just weird. And he's, of course, probably his offense is like, well, I'm a man. I'm allowed to be fat. But women aren't. Then they'll probably come up with some like excuse that that like stems from the fucking prehistoric and we're able to 
but if a woman was fat, then she would die. So, yeah. Like, I feel like all these red pill arguments literally come from, like, caveman day wisdom. Okay, well, it's like, what? So, a lot has changed. But if you want to keep living like an instinctual caveman, because your brain is very undeveloped and unevolved, I understand. You know, maybe you'll catch up one day. Anyways. Your homegirls. So like, oh, okay, like... Well, maybe you would want to consider what? I mean, it just depends what you want in life. Like Here I we go. dated guys who are, that's, there's two different guys. They're both 32. One of them is living with three roommates and like a frat house. Oh and boy. the other one exactly. has a house and, you know, a good stable job. So, so why are you dating a 32 year old who lives in a frat house, Heather? Huh? Maybe because she likes him. Have you ever thought of that? Like, like maybe a girl dates a guy because she actually likes him like it's not for his job or his money or his car maybe it's because she actually likes him <gasps> wow like what a crazy idea mind blown It's, it's so funny how women tell on themselves. So she's trying to toe the line, but in towing the line, she's trying to toe the line, but in towing the line makes herself look bad. Well, it depends because you could have this or that. And I've dated them both. No, sorry. Team Peterson says, is Heather as basic as she looks? Um, No, I think, I think, I think Heather, I think Heather is probably, you know, I think she's probably more intelligent than the average woman is. Uh, her age, uh, you know, listen, she did go to college. She did, uh, you know, she did presumably graduate from law school. Um, but, uh, but I think the reason why, I think the reason why she, she comes off as more intelligent is because we're, we're, we're thinking of her as a 25 year old, 25 year olds don't look or act like Heather. Like we know Natalia is 25. We know that we know that Nafisa is 25, but 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 Heather is not I don't know I don't want to say Heather is masculine but she's not very feminine either she's she's not she's she's really not that feminine not as far as I'm concerned Obviously, you pick like what does that mean I know their argument's gonna be like oh gender fluid like what's a man what's a woman like no I, i'm saying like how is she not feminine is he saying because she's articulate and confrontational she's not feminine hmm hmm i don't know i don't know Oops. It's just weird. Again, it's just it's just fucking weird. I actually think this guy um who's reacting to this video, his name is Donovan Sharp, which makes me really sad because my first cat's name is Donovan and he was like the best cat ever. Like he was like my best friend. We were the same age. I had him for 18 years. He died when I was 18. He was 18. But anyways, um, so this guy, Donovan Sharp, I'm just going to call him Sharpie. Um, I don't know why E, but it was what I call him Sharp. It's like, oh, you dress sharp. Like, you're a real sharp, quick thinker. Like, that's too positive. I, I'm going to make it Sharpie because he's like a permanent stain on the on the name Donovan. Okay, so 
I actually think he has a crush on Heather, like a, a little crush on her. I think that's why he keeps like um, making these like remarks about her, these like little jabs and insults, like, yeah, Heather's too much like this, or oh, Heather got triggered. Like he's like kind of not like sexually aroused, but like intrigued by it. I don't know how to describe it. I just have a sense that he likes Heather. He He's married and everything, but like, I mean, he does go in here and talk about, you know, just basically just rating and judging women in their 20s every day on YouTube. So I'm not saying that's cheating or anything. I'm just saying like he has to... He's, like, looking at them at some kind of level of interest, maybe not for himself. But I think he has, he would have a thing for Heather if he wasn't married. Let's just put it that way. Okay, let's go on. The frat house. No, I'm that just saying, like, there's 32-year-olds. <laughs> but still... huh? No, I'm saying there's 32-year-olds right. on that level, yeah. and then there's 32-year-olds at a different but, level. Uh, so... Wait, 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 wait. She sounds like a 25-year-old to me, by the way, but whatever. I actually, I actually think the other girl, not Natalia, but um, the other girl, the black woman, I didn't catch her name, but I think she looks um, the oldest. I was like, she's 25? She just looks so, like, mature. Okay. I mean, did, wait, she just lied. Hold up, wait a minute, hold the fuck up. Did she say she dated him? At the time, um, and then the youngest I would date, met. Okay, Not so all 27 again, year olds I wanna are... bring, God, we got from it. a woman's perspective, why, like, what would you say to your girl if she's like, yeah, I'm um, 25 and my boyfriend's 24, or my boyfriend's my age, like, what would you say, like, each of you, what would you say to your homegirls to like, oh, okay, like, well, maybe you would wanna consider what? I mean, it just depends what you want in life. Like I've dated guys who are, that's, there's two different guys, they're both 32. One of them is living with three roommates in like a frat house. Oh, there it is. She just said, I've dated him. I dated two different guys. And the Boy, other one exactly. has a house and, you know, a good stable job. So, so obviously it's, you picked yeah. the front. Yeah, there it is. Jay Belize is right, says she's 32. She just said her age. Yeah, she, she seems to be fixated on that number 32. No, I'm that just saying like there's 32 year olds. <laughs> but she dated still, him though. Huh? No, I'm saying there's 30. You see? I said, but you dated him though. No, y yes, sweetheart. Dude, you get, listen, check this out, man. Check this out. A lot of guys in this community, a lot of guys in this community like to call other girls in this community uh, uh, a chameleon, right? A lot of people say, uh, Pearl is a chameleon. No, she's not. She's not, I know her personally. Devin she is. Personally. She is Pearl a chameleon. Is, dude, she is as authentic as they come. She is the real deal. She is exactly. She's literally the most unauthentic person ever. Oh, right, maybe she's like. Maybe she's authentic as in like. Yeah, I'm going to be as red pill as possible. But she's unauthentic in the way where like none of her own thoughts are original. Whatever like the panel or her guests are saying she agrees with or if it's like the women she just automatically disagrees with because the women aren't saying it but then she'll say to them no no I agree I agree but like, like she'll pose them a question and then she's like expecting them to give like the answer she wants and they all go like no and she's like okay okay i agree with you but this is like how a man thinks of it and they're like no girl but yeah and literally none of she and uh, i've been watching her videos because she was the one who was recommended to me and she just like fucking just obviously she triggered me because she's one of those stuck up spoiled just like obnoxious empty-headed, like, air-headed girls who just 
like puts down other girls to try to look good to men who are only going to disrespect her and probably not pick her anyways because she's not like a supermodel. <laughs> um, so like it's all for nothing. It's kind of funny. It's like jokes on you. But she's young. Maybe she'll realize. But she's a bitch. So I really don't feel any remorse. It's like being, and it's just, it's not just like a reg- your regular 25 year old bitch. It's like beyond bitch. Anyways, um, um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Oh yeah, she like, she she'll like ask the people, she'll like ask the guys like, oh, what should be my opinion on this? I used to think it was this. Oh, really? That's what it is? Okay. It's like you're allowed to have your own thoughts. Like, okay. But yeah, super authentic. Okay. Who she is. You ask her a straight up question, she'll give you a straight up answer. Heather, gentlemen, that is a chameleon. That is a chameleon. She can, she, she can never give a straight answer on anything because she wants to avoid looking bad, right? But then when push comes to shove and you actually catch her in something, then she'll go back and deny it. You can never, ever, ever, you can never trust women like Heather because you never know, you just never know what she's thinking. She's always in pageant mode. It's almost as though she thinks that if, if something gets out, that could, that could possibly infringe on her future pageant eligibility. Like Heather is terrible for podcasts, man. She really is because she doesn't offer anything. 32 right. year olds on that level yeah and then there's 32 year olds at a different but level let's so talk about think... the le- talk about the same age if your girlfriend's like i met this guy mm-hmm. he's the same age as me mm-hmm. like what meaning you might be like on one hand hey good for you that's great yeah what what's the warnings you would give her hey you might want to consider because again you you're advocating going for a guy as much as 20 years older so you must have strong feelings on this what would you tell your best friend that was dating i mute him this is the problem. Like, he's posing this question as if her friend just told her, hey, I just met this guy. Oh, um, how old is he? Oh, he's my age. He's 25. Sorry, I'm drinking cherry Coke. Very bubbly. Oh, he's my age. I'm 25. And this uh, interviewer host is asking her, like, what advice would you tell her? Like, oh, hey, well, that's great. But, like, he's trying to set her up to um, basically advise her friend that dating a guy your age or younger isn't a good idea. And you should advise her to date older guys. Um. And this is the other problem with these red pill people, red pillars. Um, They generalize everything. I know we have to like talk about situations in general, you know, um, blanket terms kind of, but like, I just feel like it's like, for me, I would, I would say in general, guys a few years older are typically in a better place for a relationship, but that's not always true. I would have to meet him first. So if I meet my friend's boyfriend and he is her age and He's clearly just not relationship material. He's really immature, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, uh, maybe he's like just like too young, you know? Like older guys are usually more ready to get serious and settle down, blah, blah, blah. It's just like they 
automatically generalize. So it's like, oh, my girlfriend's dating a guy who's 25, who's her age. That's not going to work. Just tell her, no, like you got to find an older guy because it, not everyone is the same. And they talk about like, oh, yeah, we have to speak generally. Yeah, but like we can't be giving advice just based on generalizations. Like, because then everyone's going to assume that everybody is the same and operates the same. And we already have that problem as a society. There is no individuality. A guy the exact same age. I think, I mean, it's common knowledge that women just 25. mature at a faster rate than men. So I feel that's like... That's a fallacy. No, that is a fallacy. That's a fallacy. Uh, that's a fallacy. Hold on, let her, let her finish. That's I'm not going to be that guy. Let, let her finish. Then Fosh, and we'll open up with a gentleman. Go ahead. I feel like women at 25 are at a different place in their life than as men that are 25. So yeah. I just feel like I've just always had better luck dating older men. I, that might not be the same for everybody, but that's my experience Fosh. that I've had at least. like. A this is so funny. She can't say it. She can't say, hey, guys who are 25 years old ain't worth anything. And we're not. We're useless in our 20s. Heather knows it, but she refuses to actually say. Heather will never say anything bad about anybody. You got to be very, very careful. You have to be very, very careful with people who never have a terse word for anybody. You just can't trust anything they say five-year age guy. What would you tell me. your friend who's 25 dating a 25-year-old? Um, you have to really like evaluate the person that you're dating for the long term. Um, are you guys going to get married? Does it make sense financially? Like, I'm I'm not going to say like financially, but like financially doesn't yes. make sense for the long term. If not, you're probably going to be wasting your time. What do you want? Like we're saying, like women mature faster. Most of the men around my age, they're not ready for mm -hmm. a strong commitment. They're still playing the field. They're like, oh, I want to date this, this, and this, whatever. Most Older men are like, you know, I'm looking for a partner and somebody yeah. that I want to have children with or, you know, for the long run. So I would say analyze the guy and figure out if it makes sense for the long term, unless you want to be divorced. And oh, wow. <laughs> let, let me ask the girls one more question. I'm coming to you, MLG. What you uh, Vic Bynum with the $10 Super Chat says, Heather would look like Master Splinter without the makeup. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, man, Master Splinter. Master Splinter was my favorite on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Master Splinter was a fucking badass. Real shit. What age do you want to what age do you want to get married and what age do you want to have your first kid? I would say now, but unfortunately that didn't happen. But there it is. Finally. Finally. Hey, say what you will about Fosh. At least she has her priorities in line. At least she has her priorities in line. Her value will never be as high as it is right now. That's when you lock down a man of value and have kids with him right now. That's what you do. So good for her for having that right mentality. Okay. Um, by the All time right. I'm 28, I would like Married. to. Let me just add, the man who just said that doesn't want kids. He's never wanted kids. And he's still saying her highest value is right now. Ugh. So weird. So you have three or years. Children, Clock's yes. ticking. Yes, it is. And then you want to have a kid at what age? First kid. 27, 28. Okay, so like marriage, soon, kid, bang, very bang. soon. I would like that soon. Same, I agree. different. Very I agree. Good. Okay. Wow, okay. MLD, tell them why they're wrong about men not maturing uh, faster no, I, or I just slower than like, women. I, I was like, you know, they're giving advice and it's good, but like, I was just wondering, like, they're both single, so how's their advice valid? Ho <laughs> ho ho! You're single. Well, there's a, a big I'm difference. I'm not a woman. I know, but how is your advice valid for men if you're also single? Because I, I coach <laughs> thousands of men who get into successful relationships and get married and have children. Here's so, the thing. Oh, 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 let's uh, relax. What, what, so what's your point, though? Is that they're not giving good advice? What, what, are you, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that the advice they gave, whereas like, like the end point is to be married and have children. Yeah. They're not married and have children, so how is their advice valid? It doesn't mean I couldn't be if I didn't want to be. What? Like you said, you're... Yeah, there it is. It doesn't mean I couldn't. That still doesn't make a difference. His end game is to marry and have children, and he's not married with children, and he's still giving advice to people who um, 
want to get married and have children. So he didn't answer the question at all. He just stuttered, slowed down, stumbled over his words, and then repeated the same exact thing. So that was dumb. <laughs> be if I wanted to be, yeah, but that's the problem. That's the problem. You could be married if you wanted to be, but the op your options, your options are not the ones you want. Single by choice. Right now, I'm also single by choice. Uh, how about this? Mm -hmm. What do you disagree with what they said? Um, I don't think that women mature faster than men. Maybe biologically. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yes. But not emotionally and certainly not mentally. That and, and again, I agree with him, but that's not an indictment on women. <laughs> this is just how oh. women are. The, the, here's how it works. This is just women how women are. Stop the maturation, the mental maturation process as soon as they figure out that they are sexually attracted. As soon as as soon as a woman figures out she's hot. Oh, this is why guys talk wait, to me. Wait, hold on, hold on. You're this. literally mansplaining what it's like to Don't be a woman right now. Oh. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Did this bitch really just say mansplain? Mansplaining doesn't exist. That's an American. Oh my god. If you want to trigger any one of these guys, toxic masculinity, mansplaining. There's another one too. I can't think of it, but those two, they get so butthurt. And they like fucking flip out. It's hilarious. Oh, hello. Thanks for joining. Oh, I'm drinking soda, so, okay. Anyways. America only term, and it's yeah. retarded as fuck. Yeah, yeah, listen, <laughs> listen, you can call it whatever you want, but this is how it is. When when women- Mansplaining, when, I can't believe I heard that. When women figure out that- I can't believe I heard that. sex with them, they, and this actually it didn't used to be the case. This is only a modern problem. And the reason why is because it's because as soon as a woman figures out that men wants to have sex with them, the world opens up to them. Yes. Every woman is born with everything they need to get everything they need. And so what happens in a woman's subconscious is, oh, men want to have sex with me. Guess what? There's no relationships without sex, sexual attraction. There's no sex without sexual attraction. There's no marriage. There's no kids without sexual attraction. And so what the hindbrain says is that, oh, okay, I've made it. Men want to have sex with me when men want to marry me men want to have kids with me so the, the the common trope of modern women is they don't feel that they have to improve themselves in any way because all they have is that sexual allure but as soon as they have to pay for their own drinks at the bar uh -oh. as soon as they can't get into the club for free what then happens in their in their head is oh wait a minute the same guys who were looking at me when i was 18 19 20 years old they're not looking at me anymore so now i need to learn to cook and clean be fit feminine friendly you know be agreeable be an affable person yeah. be a follower etc cetera, etc cetera. again that's not an indictment on females that's just how they are but what John was saying is 100% correct. Women mature faster physically. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they do mature quicker emotionally, but only because they're getting attention from older men. Yeah. That's just yeah. that's just the way that works. Now, I will admit. That is exactly my point. Thank you, Sean, for pointing that out. Because, And I was actually just about to reply to his comment and say, maybe, you know... Guys should start trying to, like, raise their standards. I feel like there's so many guys, especially in this red pill community, who are just looking for, like, the hottest girl. And half the times, you know, they don't even want a girl who thinks for themselves. They, you know, I've heard Andrew Tate say, if, if a girl knows too much, like, I don't want that. She needs to have innocence and purity and like not experience things. I want to show her and like teach her my thoughts. So you're basically, you, you want an empty headed hot girl. And then they go and date these women and complain about all women, and, you know, like compare us to them. And really if they just raise their standards and, um, I kind of went off track, but I feel like a lot of this comes down to they're looking for validation from women when, you know, I feel like they should just validate themselves and 
instead of having to get that from women and raise their standards, find higher quality women from a, from an earlier age. Like, I don't know. Um, when I was in my twenties, I was a knucklehead. You know, I mean, we were. And you know, when when I was in my twenties, I was useless. I was skinny. You know, didn't have any facial hair. Wasn't making any money. I was lazy, et cetera, et cetera. So I agree with you. My advice to guys is you should not even start to think about a long term relationship with a woman until you are at least thirty five and you have smashed at least thirty five girls. Because if you <laughs> don't, you are headed for destruction, my friend. Yeah. Will, let me ask you a question. Um, we're having this conversation of men women maturing uh -huh. age different uh, what's the age difference between you and your girls same age yeah i'm like a few months older would you say that you're more mature than her would you say that she's more mature than you would you say it's an equitable distribution of maturity break that down i think well see i i think uh it depends like i think i've always said there's not a, there's not a big difference between children and adults because if a child mm -hmm. let's say doesn't get love and affection or a certain emotional category when they're a kid, then that's going to develop as an adult. Okay. okay. Have you ever worked with somebody that was like, man, that guy's an asshole. Yeah. And then you work with people that are more humble. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think that varies, but we're probably about the same. Like we're, we've always been on the same wavelength. We have similar ambitions, similar goals. We have a similar viewpoint. So uh, equitable distribution, sir. What is what yeah. is uh? So you're in finance. You're in real estate. You're uh, how would you describe your career? So I buy assets that produce cash flow. Okay, so that's Beautiful. mostly real yes, estate. Uh, real estate. Uh, we're we're placing an ice machine in Missouri. Uh, Airbnb, Very nice. Very uh, nice. Produce it in the yeah, this guy, dude. This guy diversified. Like, dude, the conversation I had with this guy blew my mind. I was like, dude, holy moly, uh, dude. I bought his, uh, dude. I bought his book. Um, I bought his ebook right then, right then and there, man. Right then and there. Oh, a of Income producing assets. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And what does your wife do for work? So she was a stay-at-home mom okay. for several years, and now we, she uh, is the director at a private school in Austin. Gotcha. Oh, so okay. she's more the feminine, uh, taking care of the kids role, whether it's at home or even her career. Yeah, path she did that for point. like seven years. Now, do you home. want your woman working? I want. Like, her do you do want her making money? Do you want her? You said your kids are nine and seven. What were they? Nine and six. Nine and six. Yeah, yeah. Nine and six. So why did she go back to work, and how recent was that? Um, so I want her to, to answer your first question. Yeah. I want her to do whatever she desires to do. No. Well, your woman should desire to take care of you. If a woman has desires outside of your relationship, then you are not, that's not a relationship. I want my wife to do whatever it is she wants to do. No negative. No, 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 man. Nah, uh-uh. Devin and I, dude, Devin and I aren't even married. And she will ride or die for me till the end. At least that's the way it is now. That's the way it is as of right now. Who knows? That could change tomorrow, the next day. Who knows? Who knows? But a woman who is truly down for you, all she wants to do is take care of you. That's it. Jay Blaze says, Will is smart, just henpecked. I agree. Dude, Will is extremely. That is just, that's not loving your woman to love her. That's loving your woman or your wife to love yourself. I feel like a lot of these guys look at relationships as like an asset. It's what can I get out of this person for myself, can they raise my status? You know, how how good do I look with her on my arm? Can I raise my, you know, ability to reproduce, of course? Can I raise my, um, obviously, access to sex? Um, I, I don't really know, it seems like that's pretty much, and, uh, Right now, I'm generalizing. When I'm talking about guys during this whole thing, I'm talking about these red pill guys because not all guys are like this at all. There are tons of guys out there who are 100% against this, who don't believe in cheating. And um, it's just what scares me is the amount of young boys and men who are watching this content and listening to these older guys who call themselves the alphas and um 
are just promoting this type of very toxic behavior. And it's not only toxic for women, it's toxic for uh, young boys too, who, who are listening to this and are just gonna, it's, it's just not healthy. They're gonna be ultra competitive. They're gonna be super upset when they don't get, you know, fucking 30 Lamborghinis and they're not billionaires and they don't have the hottest girl and um, they're just, they're chasing materialism. They're not chasing anything with substance. So I just don't think it's healthy to, and then of course they're clearly objectifying women too. You're never going to find a true relationship that gives you more than just those those um, superficial rewards from from a relationship, and that's sad. You're not going to end up happy. You're going to end up very angry like that. So, um, so I think that was the last part of that I wanted to play. I want to go to a different. I'm going to jump to a different part in this money, but video. Women are, dude, women are one um, of the few things that can, that can bring brilliant men to their lives. One of the few. All right, guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, oh, no, okay, that's, that's the end of the video. Post. So that's the end of that. All right, so let's see. What video will I go to next? Yes, it's just an extension of them. And they, they do, they just generalize. And it's very hurtful because I think we generalize too much already as a society instead of, um, you know, we look at people and make judgments. That's natural. We can't help that. But to automatically assume our judgments are always 100% correct, I think is hurtful. We can look at somebody and be like, oh, they, they're coming off as this type of person but to just automatically make those assumptions and think of them as true without giving them a chance of, you know, being an individual is hurtful. And it causes problems that might not even exist. You might like hate somebody for thinking a certain way that they don't actually think just because you're guessing. Um, and, and that works with, like, with, um, with genders, too. Like, if a guy assumes, if a guy listening to this kind of content meets a girl and assumes that she just wants him for his money and he has to, you know, be six foot tall and make this much money and blah, 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 or else she won't like him. Like, he's already going to have these negative concepts, like, in the back of his head about her um, if he automatically assumes. And it goes both ways. Females do the same with men too. A lot, a lot of females think men, um, all men are cheaters or, um, or all men are kind of like this uh, behavior or they just want sex or whatever and, and it hurts. It goes both ways. So these generalizations and these assumptions and labels is, I just think is like one of the main issues in society in general, just with all aspects in life as a whole. So let me think of what video I'm gonna play next. I have a whole bunch of videos and clips to play. Let's go to All right, let's do this. <laughs> da, 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 da. Let me find it. Um where is it? Uh, 
Um, hmm. Oh, hold on. One second. Sorry. Okay, hold on. I guess I removed that one. So let's try instead. Um, let's do. This one. Sorry, one second. Let me. All right, let's try this one. Okay. Present, share. All right. Why is it not playing the the um sound? Oh, average in every way in Starbucks working. You ain't getting um, DM ever. Hmm. You but girls, you girls, you girls will never as much as you might be unhappy. Let me try again. Sorry, first live stream. So trying to figure out these technical difficulties. <laughs> um Uh, let's see. System audio. Why is it not playing the sound? It was just working. I understand it. You're Joe Schmo. <laughs> Average in nearly every. Um. I don't know. Can you guys hear the sound from the video? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying to you. I'm just asking. Can you guys hear that? The men, the men with, telling you right now. The men with absolutely zero partners, do you know what they try? They certainly try communication. <laughs> they're trying. <laughs> you're just ignoring their DMs. Thirsty. Trust me, you they're trying they try? communication. Yeah. Certainly try the reason <laughs> is, is that we have to understand we live in a world now. And, and we've always lived in a world where women have a natural, a natural inclination to align themselves with the top tier males. I can prove this to you. You see these chicks, they see a rapper in the club. They want to fuck with the rapper. Do you think they believe that rapper is loyal? No. No, they no. don't give a fuck. He's the dawn. That's the game. It's always been the game. It still is the game. So when we're talking about how it's harder for men than women, we're talking about the
Oh. <laughs> okay, I figured it out. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to bring up your point, though, because I do think that there are so many uh, men topics and issues that do need to be talked about um, that are really important today. But unfortunately, these uh, the, the mainstream voices for men right now, I just don't think are positive influences for them. And if, if anything, they're reinstating the negative kind of forces that like men have lived under already um because because i do feel like the reason we have so many frustrated unhappy like miserable and just like angry adult men today is because they one don't have an outlet if they show one ounce of weakness they're humiliated and put down for it instead of just like you know we we don't we're not trying to um raise or promote men to be a bunch of wussies and cry babies but honestly i feel like if they were able to express their feelings without the fear of being called a coward and a a, a bitch or something honestly like i feel like they'd be able to grow and be more strong of people because they could like learn to handle and cope with their emotions and move on from them instead of letting these frustrations fester and then in turn getting mad at the world or or his wife or his boss and stuff because he has no outlet and it also teaches you how to handle your emotions and your feelings and what you're going through um it'll also connect you know husband and wife if because I feel like I see a lot of especially older couples I see when they're going through something maybe the loss of a child or just some type of marital issues lots of times the, the husband won't want to talk about it and the wife is just like lonely in her thoughts and there's a whole communication issue and it leads just to more separation from them so if men felt like they could talk without being judged um and i mean again like we're not saying like uh, like i don't know i just I, I think that's a huge problem and and this idea of oh just you know don't you don't have problems just suck it up and don't be a bitch like like it's okay to be upset and have emotions now if your friend is literally like it's been like weeks and months and they're still miserable and pouting over the same girl it's like okay bro like then you might have to give them some tough love but like initially like we shouldn't just be turning them away and telling them to suck it up and be a man um that doesn't make you you know the ultimate alpha masculine man like if anything being a real man and knowing how to maturely handle your problems and face them instead of just pushing them down is more masculine in my opinion and you're not worried like that shows that a man isn't worried about like society's judgments and how he looks like he's not worried about that shit he's actually just worried about him himself his family his wife like that's what's important to him not how like his friends see him so thank you for making that comment the vast majority of men because you women because you're all beautiful and you're all smart most of you only interact with top tier males so, so you're like well i have these problems but he has all these bitches because he's a g most mm -hmm. men ain't shit 
You know that. If you think about it, most men ain't shit. Go walk down the high street. Tell me how many of them stand a chance with you. Usually know. fucking zero. Most men are desperately lonely. <laughs> desperately. Yeah. So you want to sit here and talk about the struggles of life as a woman. There are men out here. The, the male suicide rate is so many times higher than women for a reason. Of course. The life as an average man is brutally, un, it's brutally depressing. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I'll tell you something. I don't, I don't consider myself an average man. I'm a success. I'm a very successful man, right? I have a few genetic gifts. I've worked very hard. I have financial not gifts. I worked for them, right? Mm-hmm. I, I've got accolades. I've got everything, right? My life's great. I have financial that's, gifts. I that's, them, right? I, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Life as a man today is very, very hard. So why do we have to make it harder on them and tell them to ignore the problems and pretend like everything's okay? Be a man, suck it up. Great. But life as an average man, Joe Schmo, is literally fucking horrible. And I don't think most women understand this because you know what the biggest problem about being an average dude is? What? If you're an average dude and you work in KFC and you ain't shit and you get a chick, you know what the problem with that is? That means your chick fucks average dudes. Bam. So now everybody's competition. Bam. That motherfucker at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> why is everybody competition? Because, well, you would have to stay within your standards. What if she's in love with you, you and you're in love with her? Because yeah. why would someone go above their standards or less you, than I'm, if they don't serve that? I'm going to tell you. When you're a big G, you're hard to replace. Of course. But if you're literally Joe Schmo, I, it's unfortunate, but it's true. You're relatively easy to replace. But there it's are women in that. There's women who will take I you. And fully Complete. Okay, you. okay, so let me. Okay, so let me change. Let me change the paradigm. So maybe you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Please, my dear. Of all the things I am, the last is narrow-minded. Uh-huh. Please listen. If you have Joe Schmo and his chick, Joe Schmo gets zero DMs a year, and possibly one chick a year who might talk to him. His average ass chick, her inbox is still full. She still has unlimited options. Maybe they ain't great options, Mm -hmm. but she still has options. And this is the point. This is why men struggle in breakups more than women. How many times have you been with a guy and after the breakup, he's blowing up your phone? Do you know why? Because you can go out to the club the same day and get a new guy. Even though that guy was still a cool dude, he's going to be lonely for months now. Mm -hmm. That's why he's Mm -hmm. blowing up your phone. It is harder as a man. It's a harder game as a man from head to toe. It always has been. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. You women are the prize. Fantastic. Good. You're the one who can have the babies. Great thing. But when we're sitting here talking about, oh, it's hard as a chick, it is a thousand times harder for men. And we're talking about G's of the game. If I were to sit here and send 100 DMs, right? I've got a few followers. I've got cars, money all over my page. Hundreds of thousands of followers. I I I got a blue tick, right? I'll still only get 40, 50% reply. Okay. Imagine I had 300 followers in a Toyota. It's 0%. You guys don't understand. You, these guys are operating at 0% reply rate. Zero. And here's, it's fucking hard. And you know it's what hard. the part is? It's got that smile of the pedo. You know, I, I mean, I've got kids and I would not let my kids around this dude. Agree. I let my kids around Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's that. Um, yeah, so that's going to lead me to my next, um, my next clip that I want to show you. It kind of goes along the lines of that, but I just, my, like, I don't understand why it can't be like, yes, men have struggles and women have struggles too. Why does it have to be like, men's lives are so much harder than women, or women's lives are so much harder than men. Why can't we just see that we both have struggles that, you know, some are, just as individuals, some lives are harder than others. And females have struggles that are harder than men, and men have struggles that are harder than females. I don't know why it has to be this such like black and white opposition um, and just invalidating women's problems and belittling our um, just, just our existence, our journey, our 
our purpose. I feel like that. I really feel like that's what it comes down to. It's just, it feels so disrespectful for women who have accomplished, you know, just been the underdogs and have accomplished so much in their life. And then to just say like, oh, well, you were born with value. You didn't earn any of that because you didn't need to. You could have just sold naked pictures of yourself online. Like, that's the problem. (laughs) The problem is that one of the only easiest ways for a woman to get rich is through sex work. That's not like... That's that's not like an easy life. Like, oh, I have it so easy because I can just be a porn star. Like, I have it so much easier than guys. But that's how they see it. And then the funny part about it too is these same guys go and say they'll never date a hoe. They'll never they they're they'll only marry a woman who's like damn near a virgin. And yet they also say like, if a woman denies you sex on a date, um, she's worthless, kick her out. Um, even, even, as, even if your wife denies you sex every now and then, like, if she says she's too tired every now and then, they literally say, um, actually, maybe I'll bring that one up. They literally say, okay, well, then he's going to cheat on you. Like, that's your duty as a woman. So maybe I'll bring that one up, and then I'll bring up the the other one I was going to play next. Let's see. It is... Hold on. I should have been more organized. Um, da, 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 da. it was okay. Let's see. Here, okay, let's go to this one because this kind of has to deal with that. And then I'll do the, the sex, the required sex one. Okay, let's see. Um, oh. All right, here it is. Here we go. Share audio. Oh, let me start from the beginning. Oh, oops. That doesn't come with damages, etc. Wouldn't it be better to just go that route? Realistically speaking, if you can get have to show you a guys. younger girl that has less experience, that doesn't Hello? come with damages, etc. Wouldn't it be better to just go that route versus taking a girl that's been through a bunch of shit and trying to fix it? Realistically speaking? Sometimes yeah. it's nice to connect with someone that's been no. through the same shit you've been through, though. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Would you say that? And thank you. I would love to collaborate. Um... Yeah, uh, I'll put my uh, email out there or something, or I don't know. We'll get in touch somehow. But yeah, I would love to collaborate. Thank you. Um, female hardships are Thank mere you for male being hardships. Here, guys, yeah, I appreciate it. really? it's my first live. For sure, and it's nice to connect with someone that's been through the same hardships. What if I told you male experiences and female experiences typically are fairly drastic and different? Uh, poverty. Right, it's the similarities, right? Being like through tough times, your family doesn't have money. Those are the similarities. Yeah, it can be, yeah. but the, the thing is, is that abuse. 
Okay. We, we can, we can, the similarities right there. I mean, abuse is a very broad term. Uh, but if we're going to talk about we're poverty, about similarities, poverty doesn't affect men the same way it affects women. And it, it can though. Yes. Cause it, 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 I see what you're saying. It's easier for women to deal with poverty because mm -hmm. right. If you're a beautiful woman, you can just like be like, oh, put your mind, your hand out, and like people want to help you. Yeah. But still, that's still a lot of shit to go through, same as a man. Not necessarily, and because when you here's the thing, when you're going through a hard time, the exit strategy of that hard time directly reflects how you feel about said hard time. I'll explain. As a man, if you're broke and you don't have money and there's no way out, there's no way out. It's like, damn, I have to become successful, or I'm going to continue to experience this. As a woman, it's like, okay, this sucks. I can be successful, or I can go find a rich guy, or I can go dance, or I can sell feed pictures on OnlyFans. There's way more routes options for and a options woman. for a woman to get out. So that's going to True. directly affect her mind. There is way more sex job, sex work options, which isn't an option for every woman. And I would even argue that that's part of the problem. That, I mean, obviously today it's a lot better than it used to be, but women obviously, and you know, this isn't necessarily a man's fault, but obviously women have um, more limitations um, and it's not even like they can't do a lot of these trade jobs, like construction jobs and like welding and landscaping. But lots of men don't want to hire a woman to do a man's job for them, you know? And yeah, like it just, some women just aren't built for that. But obviously now it's great that we are seeing women in higher positions in the office, corporate business world, but we still have a lot of work, um, to like improvement to go but like a woman who's uneducated without a degree um i think there's a lot more options for for men honestly with like to, to have a real career and make bank with these with these trade jobs like um even and i mean women can do it too like um like technician work electricians and stuff like that um but i don't think it's fair to say that just because women can get rich off of OnlyFans that we have it way easier. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I just, I like, and he, he just says it in such a demeaning way. Like at one point he's like, I don't know if it's this video, but at one point he was like, yeah, you have a, oh no, that's, that's the sex video. Um, So well, I'll wait for that one, but. I'll keep playing it. State while dealing with the adversity. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that the women can go through the same, the same adversities that men do. They'll never fully appreciate the same level of adversity that a man does, because quite frankly, men live way harder lives than women do. I think that we can appreciate it to a certain point more than a girl that's just so naive. Okay. You, know? you can maybe sympathize, but you're never yeah. going to be able to empathize. I think we can still, we can still empathize for a you man that empathize. goes through. Because I can still see a man and, and what they've gone through to get to where they've Here's, been. Okay, okay. A woman will never be able to empathize with a male experience because men have certain obstacles that women never have to deal with and or endure. And I'm not saying that just to be like, oh my God, feel sorry for me. But what I am saying is that women can sympathize for yeah. you, but they'll never be able to empathize and with the male experience. And truly understand. <laughs> you know, yeah. just like me as a man, I won't necessarily be able to empathize on certain things like your period. I won't be able to understand no, that. No, exactly. Won't. I, I won't be able to understand saying. those cramps or whatever. <laughs> but I would argue that men have to be more empathetic to the opposite gender because for us to attract and retain and keep a woman around, we have to be empathetic to you guys. Yeah. Any guy that's good with women is empathetic to a certain degree because guess what? He's got to understand her comfort levels. He's got to know when to escalate. He's got to know when to kiss her properly, etc. Otherwise, you end up in jail for fucking chicks. So you got to <laughs> understand women to a degree and empathize, All right? right? But yeah. women, on the other hand, don't necessarily have to empathize with men because you guys are in a privileged position where we have to attract you. You don't have to necessarily attract us but overtly. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. it does. Okay, Twitch. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to get on yeah, Twitch. Yeah. Okay, okay. Twitch, tw Facebook, and uh, Twitter. But um, what, what's your take on this, uh, Zuby? Do you think it, the onus is on men more or on women? I mean, I think it's – I'll give my opinion last, but I'll, sure. I'll, I'll have you take it first. 
honestly, in most things in the world, I would put the onus on men. Yeah. Yeah. On this one, and perhaps this is also to be take a bit of a counter position, but I think this is my where I'm leaning right now is actually more women. Okay. And I say that because ultimately women are the gatekeepers of sex. Yep. Um, that's really the kind of the, the the quickest summary of it. Yeah. So when it comes to sexual dynamics and at least the early stages of relationships and how those form, um, women truly set the standard. Right. Good point. That women set the standard. Right. We we know male and female sexuality is very very different. Women are the gatekeepers of that. If women set the bar very low for what they're willing to accept, then look, men, men are always, if you think of what the term game is, game is simply men responding to the standards that females in any given society and culture set, Absolutely. Yeah, which is why over the course of history and around different countries in the world and different cultures, game is different. Yes. Right. There are in the past game was basically be clean and hygienic, have a decent job, be a nice guy, be somewhat romantic. That's how you got a wife in the Fantastic. 1950s. Yep. And that model still applies in many parts of the world. Yeah. Right. If what women are responding to is, you know, bad boy traits or, you know, certain pathologies or whatever criminal it is, background. criminal background, right. Then if a man in that society or culture or community mm -hmm. wants to attract a woman, he's going to start modeling those behaviors, whether he's truly that thing or not. Yeah. He's going to start modeling that behavior because he'll be like, wait, who are the guys around me who are getting girls? How are they behaving? Let me model that. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that I, I, I think like a lot of people have said, um, it's largely both. But I think women being the gatekeepers of sex, I put the onus for this particular topic more on women. If the if the women change, then the men the will men, acclimate. The, the, the men will acclimate. They, they, they must. To, they have to. Yeah. Um, any, 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 uh, anybody have anything that they want to say? Like uh, add on disagreements, whatever? No. I, I thought that was a good overview. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll, I'll add on to that. What I'll say is that um, it's the men are supposed to be leaders. I agree with you guys a lot on that. And they're supposed to lead. But the, the thing is, is that they're supposed to lead and take the dynamic, the relationship. But and I totally agree with you. Like, I I love like it's super sexy when a man knows how to like fix things in the house or you know work on your car and unfortunately a lot of guys don't know how to do these things today because they're so spoiled they just you know they just call the mechanic or they call the electrician or um just a lot of these things are like done for them and even guys who end up in, you know, office jobs and stuff, I still think they should learn how to do these things. And honestly, like women should learn how to do these things too. I think it's really important for women to know how to change their own tire in case of an emergency situation, if they're ever like stuck on a highway without cell phone service and it's the middle of the night, that's dangerous. Women should know how to do these things for themselves too and not be self-reliant um but like if they're in a relationship you know let the man do it for them you know give him some let him like you know like do things for you that it's nice um to let your your man do things for you and show he's needed and appreciated but um there's a lot of guys today who just um you know, just don't know how to do these things. And uh, I mean, I guess that's fine, but like, I'm not gonna put you down. I'm not gonna say like, oh, you're not a man. Like, especially if that's just not you as a person. Right, yeah, like you gotta let him like show off like that he, he can do things for you and take care of you. Um, like if you're just not that kind of person that's different, but like there's some guys who are totally capable and just like they're just lazy or they're just they grew up just so spoiled. Um, you know, like when you're an adult and real shit happens, <laughs> like and you're like in your twenties and you don't have the money to just call people to fix your shit, like I don't know. I guess like that's what YouTube is for, but I do think it is important to be teaching guys still like 
how to do these traditional man things. But I don't think it should be so, like, I don't know. There's a there's a certain point where it can get a little, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, sometimes I just feel like it's, like, too competitive in a way um, at, at, like, certain points. Like, not every, not every guy is, like, a man's man. Um, like, I do think he should learn, like, the basic things. But, like, if he's just not your, like, not every guy has to be into, like, football and going to the gym and blah, 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 blah. Like, stuff like that. But as for basic things like fixing your house, fixing your car, I do think that um, guys especially should know how to do these things. And women should be taught, to how to do important little things for emergencies to keep themselves safe um this is almost over i think but i would say argue that most women are not worthy of of them putting the work in a lot of the times and and the reason why is because a a lot of women aren't necessarily feminine they're a lot of them are overweight a lot of them are hoes a lot of them have certain backgrounds that might you know disqualify them from being wifed up and They've made bad decisions. And this goes right back to the point. There's a lot of men who aren't worth it today, too. <laughs> There's a lot of men who can't do these things for us. Just what I was just talking about. So it goes both ways. I just think as a society, it's, it's not a men. It's not a man or a woman problem. I think it's society as a whole. Technology has made us lazy. Um, uh, just so many people are just spoiled and entitled now. They just expect things um uh and yeah i just i just think we have softened as a society a bit um mentally so mentally i think we're actually we've been through the ringer i think psychologically our generation is probably one of the most fucked up (laughs) but when it comes to the physical life like this the physical life we're living i think we have it much easier i mean we don't we don't have to go out to the bank anymore to do our finances we don't have to even go out for food we have food people just drop it off for us we don't have to drive ourselves anywhere like everything is done for us everything's done super fast on the internet nobody has patience so i think that's where our our current generation is having problems and lacking um and you don't build character that way nobody's really building character and nobody feels like they've earned their way not a lot of people feel can say they've earned their way and earned their respect that's important in the past just like a lot of you guys wouldn't want a guy that used to suck in the past a lot of guys don't want a girl that has a promiscuous background right that's just what it is you don't want the mother of your children uh having a certain background so my thing is i think it's a a two-part issue right okay and that's totally fine that's totally fine for men not to want a woman who was a you know doing sex work in her past that is totally okay obviously but at the same time you're saying that you know, women have it easy because we can just get sex jobs. So therefore we can appreciate how hard a man's life is because we can make money by OnlyFans and porn and, you know, sugar daddies and, and stuff like that. But then you're saying that guys are not going to want these women. So, so maybe we shouldn't be saying, "Oh, it's so easy <laughs> for women because they can just do sex jobs," but then they're they're not going to be wanted by anyone. Like that is a female struggle, and to belittle that and deny that and just be ignorant to that, I just think is like you can't have it both ways. I don't know. They, I just this podcast is. I'm just pointing out flaws in their messages because I think it's. Um, toxic to young boys to just consume this. 
the women, right, have kind of done a whole bunch of stupid shit, right? And guys acclimate, just like you said, to whatever they need to do to get laid. Like, guys do whatever they need to do to get laid. They acquiesce. But the women kind of set the standard. They really do because women set the standard and then guys have to rise to that standard or not. So a lot of guys are looking at it like, well, I don't want to rise to the standard because I can look at it and just whack off. Like, I'm good. What the hell? Or I can just play video games, right? So it's on both parts, but I would say – the guys are lazy, right, for not wanting to take initiative, don't want to be leaders in the first place. And then the women aren't worth working for. So I, it's like a two-part issue, right? Okay. So let's go to the extreme of the extreme. I'm sorry. Uh, that, ladies. So when a man says, I'm with my bitch or whatever. 51 minutes in. Okay, so, <laughs> and I'm going to give my opinion. I want to spin it to the ladies as well, get yep. their point. Because I know I'm about to say something here controversial, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Because a lot of guys, some of you guys might be married. Some of you guys might be in a relationship with a woman. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to stand firm on it. I don't care what anyone says. If a woman does not give you the bedroom fun, okay, I'm trying to keep it YouTube friendly, she's useless to you. And I'm going to say why, okay? I know that sounds awful to say it like that, to objectify in that way. But the thing is this, men don't ask for much from women, right? We want some, some booty, maybe a sandwich here or there, peace and quiet. Men don't want much. Women, however, taller than me, make more money than me, successful, confidence, all this stuff, right? Big dick, all this other stuff. So right off the bat, I have to say, and I haven't played a lot from these, this, pod, this particular podcast yet, but here are some of the things that they have been asking for from what I have been um, watching. This is the things that, you know, they say they don't ask much for, from women, but this is what they're asking. They are asking women to give up their careers um, to, just as Donovan Sharp said earlier in the show on my live, he said that if a woman wants to do anything, then care for her man then leave her. She shouldn't want a career. She shouldn't want to go out with her friends. She shouldn't want anything except for her to take care of her husband. If she, if she doesn't, then ditch her. So they want women, they want their wives to give up their careers, give up their social lives, um, to also allow to look the other way when he cheats, because these men believe that men are naturally polygamous. Poly poly polyamorous polygamist whatever um so that like guys naturally are going to cheat and a if a good wife cares about her husband she understands that and allows him to cheat um they also ask her to be completely submissive and to anytime he asks for sex she that's her duty so she must give it to him even if she's tired um or doesn't feel like it um, and then as well as being the primary child caretakers, these guys believe that a father can be a good father without being in the child's life often. So whether that's true or not, I think that's a lot to ask for. <laughs> so it's, it's not just asking for a couple sandwiches here and there and whatever they say. It's, that's asking for a lot. And obviously not all guys ask for this. But these guys asked for this. And, you know, this is their argument. So, yeah. What's your, what's your Instagram? I went, Ludovica. I went like, back, all the way back. Why did I do that? Get yep. their point. Because I know I'm about to say something here controversial, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Because a lot of guys, some of you guys might be married, some of you guys might be in a relationship with a woman, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to stand firm on it. I don't care what anyone says. If a woman does not give you the bedroom fun, okay, I'm trying to keep it YouTube friendly, she's useless to you, and I'm going to say why, okay? I know that sounds awful to say it like that, to objectify in that way, but the thing is this. Men don't ask for much from women, right? We want some, some booty, maybe a sandwich here or there, peace and quiet. Men don't want much. Women, however, taller than me, make more money than me, successful, confidence, all this stuff, right? Big dick, all this other stuff. 
So women require a lot from men. So men don't ask for much. But since we don't ask for much, the things that we ask for are much more important. So if a girl doesn't give you sex, bro, that's like one third of what she's supposed to give you gone. 50% almost. So my thing is this. 50% of what a, what a woman gives you in a relationship is gone. Obviously, if she's not having sex with you all the time, it's a reoccurring thing, then, then that's a problem. Intimacy is an important part of a relationship. But if, if she's tired or not in the mood, or especially like after she just, you know, gave birth, some women have a hard time getting back into the mood for a couple weeks. Other women are super horny after their pregnancy. But, you know, sometimes it can be uncomfortable or they have, you know, crazy hormones and shit. Like, you might have to give her a break. And if she says no, that's not a reason to step out on your wife and go cheat on her which is what they're going to explain and these guys have 1.14 million followers i actually um saw they went live the other night uh they had uh like almost 10,000 people watching live on youtube and on rumble they had over 20,000 people watching live so this is a very popular podcast and lots of young boys, teenage boys are taking in this information and thinking it's right. I mean, if you look at the chat, it's crazy. It's just facts, facts, fuck these hoes. Yeah, like women are our property. It's, it's just so, it's it's not healthy. It's not good. It's not, it's not healthy for the boys. It's not healthy for the women. Um, it's not healthy for future children and families, just everything. It's just not good. If you're if you're in a relationship right now, for all the guys that are watching out there, you're in a relationship with a girl, your wife, whatever it is, and she's no longer giving you enthusiastic sex, ooh, start to prepare to kick her to the curb, okay? Because what will happen is if a woman doesn't respect you, this is what she's going to do. She's going to dangle that pussy against you. Oh, you want some of this? Oh, okay, take out the trash. Cook for me. Oh, take me to Nobu. Take me to Komodo. And that right there, when a woman starts leveraging bedroom fun against you, that's when she no longer respects you guys. Thanks. And right now you're seeing the byproduct of a woman that no longer respects her husband. You know what I'm saying? Talking to him like this in the way. Because here's the thing right now. He probably still pays the bills. He probably still protects her. Oh, he does. He probably still takes care of her. So his roles are still being, he's still doing his job. But she ain't doing his, her job saying, well, you, I didn't force you, blah, blah, blah. Shifting blame, not taking accountability. So guys, if your girl ain't giving you bedroom fun, she doesn't have to give you sex. I'm not saying she has to. But what I am saying is that you need to kick her to the curb and find a girl that will. I got to say, though, this man yeah, is ahead. brave. He is on a live interview telling his wife this in person. Your props to you, brother. I don't know who you are, but God damn, that's your wife, bro. That's he already lost having the conversation with her. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. so what's your take? We'll start with, uh, with Nessa and work over here. Honestly, I agree with you guys. Like, as men, like you said, you don't really ask a lot, like, for women besides sex. So it's like... I'm a person that enjoys <laughs> sex, and if there isn't that in the relationship, honestly, I, I don't, I don't know if I can stay in something like that. Wow. You know, it's I'm like, all, well, here, how about this though? Let's say you don't want to, you don't feel like having sex. But would you give it to him if he's feeling it? Okay. He wants to have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, That's the real question. It's not when you want it; it's yeah. when he wants it. Okay. Yes, but you'd have to like either go down on me first or something, because like, if I'm not in the mood, you know, like I'm, I'm not. What? Okay, okay, then yeah, then you break up with her guys. Okay. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, that's part that. Come on. <laughs> okay. You guys have sex with no foreplay? Ugh. Hold yeah. On. Hold on. So let me let me ask you this. <laughs> so So he can't even compromise for that. She's trying to compromise. She's saying, Okay, like yeah, if I'm not in the mood, but you know, you're gonna have to like get me in the mood a little bit, like you know, you don't have to go down on me, but kiss my neck, do some foreplay. And he's like, nope, guys, get rid of her. Like, you can't even do that. Relationships are about compromise and respect. And this is, this has none of that. It's funny said, because I actually kind of agree with you. But let me ask you this, though. What if you want sex? Right? Mm -hmm. Three times a day. 
like I said, I'm a person <laughs> that really enjoys it. So, so I don't mind. Okay. But like if I'm like really tired, let's say one day and, you know, I've been out all day and like I just like my body hurts. Like I've been walking in heels for hours. Like I'm just tired. And you get mad at me for saying no because I'm tired. Then I'm going to feel like I'm like forced to have like sex with you. Because I will admit, right? You shouldn't. You should have some rest days, of course, especially of course, if it's like a big dick. But at the same, but at the same <laughs> oh time, no does, does the guy rest his support for you financially? He doesn't. He was, the Which is why you have to have multiple women. Right? Uh, the, house, <laughs> look, the, the lights have to be on. Money line. I don't <laughs> agree with that. The cars be running. The bills have to be paid. There's no rest days for the guy. So for you, why is your rest days? It takes two minutes. I'm, just curious, no, I'm, just curious. I'm asking. I'm asking for you a question. For me, because. Mm. Like I'm, I work a lot. Like often, like like I said, I'm a model or like I'm an artist. Like I'm always doing something. Like I'm, I'm just always doing something. So like I get tired, you know. I'm hard working. Okay. <laughs> and I get tired. And I think that's okay to say yeah, no. Yeah, like one it's time. okay. G- it's not that you're no. saying no all the time. It's just uh, but I, so you can, don't can think your girl can say no. Yeah, like can you come happen. home and you want to and she don't want to and she says no, it's a problem. The, you're gonna kick it to the curb. Yeah, the woman is not like yes. What the hell? No, no. Here's what do you yeah. mean? Yes. If, if I come home from work and uh-huh. I am tired, I want to chill with my girl and I want to have sex, and she's like, oh no, nah, I'm tired. Then at that point, remember we agreed to a monogamous relationship. So my deal is of the bargain. I'm paying the bills. I'm taking care of the whole household. If all I want is some pleasure when I get home from but work, why I, is that bad? I don't understand the link between you. paying the bills and having sex with yeah, your... Like, with what's your the, the connection? Because remember, right? It takes two roles in a relationship. One person does A, one person does B. If I'm the guy and I'm a real man, I'm taking, taking care of the household, I'm paying the bills, and I'm adding to the family. When, now, when I get home from, from that whole stressful day, or let's say a whole week of stress, right? My girl's home as well. <clears throat> Why can't we have sex? Because I get it. You might be tired from Malin. I 100% get that. But every... Okay, I'll say this. Every now and then, I understand that. But for the most part, if I'm paying the bills, I expect on some level, that, you know what? If but you're my girl and you don't want me to step out, then take care of me while I'm here. Yeah, but if you have like the financial power, it doesn't mean that you can like, decide yeah. everything in a in relationship. In a relationship like, I think you should... Uh, put your woman in the mood. If you want to have sex three times a day, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, y'all want to come in, drop your pants and if you need to do it, you need to do it. You to go down on me, but like, come kiss my yeah, neck. Exactly. Like, yeah. Be yeah. Be no, affectionate. No, no. And if, yeah. like, I, I will say, 100%, you can't just rush in if it's dry. That, 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 that's yeah, like, like that's a hard desert. Cool for you guys. But, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I think a lot of guys. I'll do that shit, but I'm not gonna. You know what I'm saying? Mark. Okay. You know what? No, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to. Be, I'm just gonna have to okay, say the truth about this because I, I love this. Because earlier in the show, we asked you, ladies, would you be content with a man stepping out and having sex with other women? All of you were pretty much like, no, you will not accept that. However, you will not pleasure him when it doesn't convenience you. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. What? Because you guys are saying, if I'm tired. This dude's literally saying that the girls are entitled. If she doesn't have the desire, I just got go get somebody else who does. Dude, we're talking about your wife. She's entitled to, to she so she's entitled to because she thinks that when she's tired, she she's entitled to not having sex with you. Yeah, that, that's real entitlement. It, it's not more entitled for a man to be entitled to having sex with you whenever he wants, when you don't want it. I don't even know. Like, I can never be into having sex with somebody who's, like, not into it with me. Like, uh, like I couldn't imagine having sex with a guy who's, like, not into it. Yes, and, and exactly. Um birthday chat supervisor um this does give guys a really bad name and it's the same as the the um extreme feminists who give women a bad name like i hate um these women who are saying like believe all women and uh like the amber heard supporters and the women who say all men are cheaters and oh, I hate all white men and blah, 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 blah. All, all of these extremists give the regular people a bad name. And unfortunately, 
the extreme groups, it, and this goes for anything, anything, religions, um, uh, politics, just everything, the extremists, the most extreme of the extreme get the attention and the coverage because they're in the most shocking and they're the loudest voices. Um, so they, they always give the regular people a bad name and this is what people are watching and it it just sucks because same as like the extreme feminists who go out there and say believe all women and um you know they make it harder for real women who have been in like who have been raped or in you know domestically abused it makes it harder for them to be believed or taken seriously when on the news you see all these crazy feminists saying ridiculous shit like that like they are my enemy just as much as uh misogynists are and these guys do the same thing for men and they have such a large following and it's a shame because i do like i i just meet and talk to so many guys that have this type of attitude um and it's really alarming um so yeah and like i know there's lots of guys out there who obviously don't think like this um but it's just scary that this is like what's in the media and what's getting so much attention and what young preteens and young teenage boys are watching and looking up to. And it's all in the name of male self-improvement and making men men again and making alpha males. Like this is not, this is not a true man. Like, first of all, a real man doesn't have to force his woman <laughs> to want sex with him. Okay. <laughs> Like, he knows how to make his wife, he knows how to get his wife in the mood. And, you know, every now and then, if she's not, he'll respect that, and she will want him more. In fact, I would bet if he were to be like, okay, it's fine, babe, and then, like, be all loving, like, that'll probably just make her <laughs> make her want it anyways, because she's like, oh, he's so sweet. <laughs> and I'm not ready or whatever, I should be able to say no. But and my I, answer to that, but, let me finish. Uh -huh. My answer to that is this. I get it. You know, you might have had a long day walking in your heels. You might have had a long day working. You might have had a long day doing something, whatever it may be. But the point is this, okay? It's a long day walking in your heels. That's like me saying, oh, you, you had a long day working with your heels? Well, you know what? Uh, you know, I, I didn't pay the bills this week. You know, I was, I was so focused on making sandwiches. Damn it, man. I was so focused on, the light just oh came off. God. Oh my God, I was so focused. Here's the problem, ladies. You guys want to be able to get the benefits of male provisioning and security and protection without giving up what you're supposed to be giving to the man. Because the reality is this, if someone breaks into the house, right? And I'm your husband, I'm supposed to protect and care for you. I can't just say, damn man, I'm not really feeling it right now. Like, women. you know, I'm kind of scared. I don't know how I feel about this. Like, this guy might kill me. You know what? I'm not in the mood. You know but, what? I'm not. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling brave today. You got. You got this one right. You could. You could watch the porn. You, know, you got this one. <laughs> the guns in the in the thing. I'm gonna go back to sleep. No, that's the problem. Is that a man's roles are static while your roles are negotiable? And my argument is this. If you want to be able to say, I want to have bedroom fun at this time, whatever, you want to have these rules in place with when you're going to pleasure a man, when what he asks for is actually not that important. It's very little compared to what he gives you, putting his life on the line, providing mm -hmm. for you financially, putting a house over it your is. head, paying the bills, etc. You can't even give him sex. Then you need to at least accept the reality that he's going to want to have sex with other women. And you should not only allow it. But you should not, well, not even, I'm not even going to say aloud because you don't really have the, the, the choice there, but you should accept it and let him do it and not give him a hard time because all of you guys want to be able to exercise your sexual privilege, but you still want to get his roles all the time, non-negotiable, which is fucked up, which is why it is BS that guys have to bring all this to the table and women don't want to give him sex. And that's why I tell guys all the time, 
by you being a man, being in a relationship with a woman, you have to bring more to the table than she does. I hate to say it like these guys make dang too. Like I've been watching um how much money they make. Like people send five hundred dollar tips, one hundred dollars, like five hundred dollars right here, then a hundred dollars. So like within so this is probably max within the past like 20 minutes so 20 40 20 40 that's 90 110 135 160 six, 60 seven, six, 760 within oh, a half an hour at most like what the fuck like that women date up they don't date down so if you're dating up you're not looking for an equal you're looking for a superior so if you're looking for a superior you got to provide for that and yeah like protecting protecting your wife when an intruder breaks in first of all how often does that happen it's not like they're breaking in all the time and that's way too different comparisons like also plus if you have kids your wife is going to be protecting her children as well like, I know, like, if I have a husband in a house, like, we're going to have, like, an emergency thing. Like, like my husband's in front of me with a gun. I'm, like, behind him with my gun and the children are some, or, like, I'm, like, in front of the children, like, protecting them with the gun. And, the, like, we're going to have some kind of, like, safety thing. But, like, that's not something to compare it to. Like, oh, okay, if you don't want to have sex with me next time, like, an intruder breaks in, I'm just not going to protect you. Like that might not even ever happen once in in their marriage. It's ridiculous. Some of the guys in the chat, I will say, are like, nah, dude, nah. But like a lot of them are totally f down with this. That's superior. And if you don't want to do it, that's cool. But you're going to have to share them. Okay, I want to hear your thoughts. You thought. can't have your cookie and eat it too, man. No. Your cake and eat it too. I want to hear your thoughts. No, you can't have your cookie and Damn, eat it too, Damn, son, dude. where'd you find this? <laughs> so I feel like when you're in a relationship, um, most men, and when I first got in, like you first get into a relationship, the sex, is, there's a lot more sex. And I feel like that is because it's exciting and everything like that. When when you, <clears throat> when you, um, get like get used to being in a relationship with somebody Facts, i don't think everything if a woman thing. is telling her man no i don't want to have sex no i don't want to have sex and he's doing those things like purposely trying to put her in the mood kissing on her i think then that's a problem yeah. but if you're mm -hmm. coming home and you're just like hey i need you to do it. <clears throat> yeah and mm -hmm. and then oh she doesn't want to give it to you and oh well, why aren't you giving it to me now i'm gonna exactly. go see the girl next door but it's like you didn't even try to put me in the mm -hmm. situation it, it, he doesn't have to though well, like, like I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go a step further your pleasure is <laughs> But what the panel is not realizing is that modern women are not housewives. Housewives get piped regularly. Sometimes I like to like click on these profiles or um, type them in Google with YouTube behind them and like look at who these people are. They're like they're all losers. Most of them are just fucking losers just saying this crazy shit. And I'm not saying that losers can't get girls, but like to have these fucking terrible misogynist expectations and then like you're not even going to bring anything to the table yourself and you're still going to expect all this like terrible shit from a woman. Like it's just not healthy for either party. It's irrelevant. I'm going to say it. I am going to say it. your pleasure is irrelevant because it, because and now here's our, the thing. our women's pleasure yeah, is irrelevant. Pleasure. I'm going to say it. Most oh, men man. ain't going to admit it. I'm going to say it. your pleasure. Sounds like a guy who doesn't know how to pleasure a woman. It is relevant because a woman's uh, uh, what women benefit from the security provisioning and all the other things that a man <laughs> brings to the table. I love her. She's just, she was just like staring him down like, oh, I want to hear it. Hold on. Wait. Women benefit from the security because a woman's. Uh,
Oh my god, her! I just missed it by a second. She was like, how she was looking at him. Your, your ple- yeah. I'm gonna say, it. most oh, men man. ain't gonna admit. It. I'm gonna say, it. your pleasure is relevant because a woman. <laughs> right there. She's like, what? All of them? They're like, she's like, nah, dude. Like, you just don't know how to do it right. <laughs> uh, uh, what? Women benefit from the security, provisioning, and all the other things that a man brings to the table. The fact that you don't this have to work, lecture, that you live a very comfortable life, audience. you're able to get what you want, live a... It, but you, I, you, you no, you're you you no, telling no, about no, no, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Because let's keep it a stack. We, we're going to have this conversation. Let's do it. Women never treat sex as what it is. What is sex? It's basically a handshake, right? Equal value exchange. Women never treat it like that. What women do is they treat sex as a value loaded exchange. And what I mean by that is... They're always going to expect something in return for. This is the problem. Shit like this. It's irrelevant because you bring nothing but sex and house duties. Like, th- like these guys aren't. Yes, women have roles, but to like not want connection. Like that might sound cheesy, but you're going to live with this person and raise children with them. Like you want to have someone in your life that you have a real connection with and you see substance in in more than just sex and house duties. It's just just so terrible. Like I, I can't believe we're still here in 2023. And it scares me because, like, it hasn't been that long since, like, feminism and women ri- women's rights has been a thing. Like, this can, I mean, uh, fucking Roe versus Wade was just overturned. Like, it, it's not that unrealistic to think that, you know, things can start being taken, more things can start turning around, being taken away, um, and just receding back to how it used to be with um, women or men being like the superiors and women being there like you know they're under under them like it, it doesn't take that much to get back to that point I just I'm just worried I don't think it will but it could it it could. <laughs> Or the sex, right? Let's keep let's keep it real. Like a girl ain't just gonna fuck you just because. And typically, she's gonna want you to take her on a date, maybe shop, whatever it is. Women, to some degree, leverage sex for some kind of compliance from men. Very rarely are you gonna see a guy. You're hot. I'm hot. Let's do it right now. I don't even know your name. Very rarely that's gonna happen. They're gonna leverage it. So, with that said, since you treat sex as a value loaded exchange, right? I know lots of girls who love sex and they just go out. Like to meet a hot guy just to have sex with him. They don't want a date. They don't want money. They just like having sex with hot guys. So where you're getting something in return, typically the man really doesn't have to worry about since he's providing all these other things for you, your pleasure is irrelevant with sex because he has to bring all these other things to the table. And this is the uncomfortable reality. Mm. Your duty as a wife is to keep your man happy sexually because men don't ask for much. You guys ask for much. And by virtue of a man being in a relationship with you, I know inevitably he had to bring value to the relationship. You guys don't have to bring much to the relationship. But do you think that's all there is to a relationship? Just sex and you paying the bills? Like, yes. because it's not. And you guys are really making it seem like you're buying sex. Oh, I pay the bill, so you have to fuck me. Like, no, I don't actually. Like, No, you don't. You don't. And that's why I'm saying then you have to be content with sharing him. No, I don't either. Yeah, like, okay, you can just see, go. That, that, like, that, that, like, like, <laughs> at that point, just get a hooker. Like, why do you even have a wife at that point? You might as well just pay for sex because that's basically what you're doing. You're keeping a stay-at-home prostitute. You're, it's basically like having a prostitute on retainer. First of, all, first of all, I don't have a problem with sharing my man. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. Uh, but if we spoke about this is us relationship and this is a me and you relationship, then it's going to be that way. Because yeah. that's at the, end of, at the end of the day, a relationship is whatever you make it. 
a relationship doesn't have to go by the same guidelines that her relationship goes by and that her relationship goes by. If I meet you and we both agree, okay, this is what we're going to do and this is how it's going to be. And then you're going to start cheating. Then that's completely freaking different. But the way that like, okay, because now you guys are saying like, oh yeah, but how you guys first brought it up, you guys are making it seem like you're coming home to your wife. You're looking at her and you're like, I'm tired from work. Let's fuck nobody's gonna want to do that like and that's the way you guys made it seem you guys didn't make it seem that you guys are coming home you're like hey baby start kissing on your girl then it gets it, uh, it goes from there no you guys are making it seem like you guys are walking into your house like your wife and be like i had a long day at work shit. i pay all the bills you did nothing today so now you have to like okay well i'll tell you this hold on no 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 now, you know if we're gonna have these negotiable roles like this where he's gotta uh, butter you up and all that other stuff if someone breaks into the house all right you're gonna run your shit then you know what i'm gonna look at you and be like hey um <laughs> Can you get, sing to me real quick? Get me ready. I'm, I'm gonna like. I, I need to go defend us. Can can you um, can you give me like uh, play play the Vegeta theme for me? Like, come on, I need to get hyped up. Can you do that? But you you're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, are you crazy? We we're gonna get robbed right now. Uh, but you're comparing something Fucking that has to comment. be like life threatening and like my safety and all of our safety because you're in the house too. We could both get shot if you're not gonna do nothing. You're comparing that to like something that isn't. A danger, something that isn't like you don't need to have sex, like you want to have sex, you don't need to have sex. You know what's perfect? <laughs> you just walked right into my trap. Okay, trap card. Exactly. <laughs> He's putting himself on the line for something far more serious and more dangerous, and you can't even give him sex. But there's That's no comparison the there. There's a big comparison. Yeah. He's putting his life on the line. Because someone broke into our home where we yeah. both live, yes. where we all live, but, but hold where on, our hold kids on. are let at. Me, let me finish. Mm -hmm. He's putting his life on the line to protect you. And putting himself. himself. No, 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 no. He could run out the house. Okay, I could run out too. We could all run. We could all run. We could all run. We could all run. Let's keep it a stack, though. Let's keep it a stack. You ain't going to expect him to run. He's going to have to defend the house. Most guys, if, it, if he loves his wife, he's going to defend her. So he's putting his life on the line to protect you. But you're over but here I, saying, well, if I don't feel it right now, or you don't kiss me on my neck, I'm I not going to give it to you. I think that protected person doesn't mean to pay the bills. Or no, 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 ladies, insure, the problem is this. Insure. You guys have a problem with doing your job, but you don't. But you have you have a problem with doing your job, but you don't have a problem with holding your husband to his job. See the difference? Mm, he yeah. has to put his life on the line to protect you. He's obligated to do that. But if he says, hey, I want you to have sex with me, and you, hey. I don't feel like kissing you on the neck. I just want to get my D sucked. This is a problem. I'm not an object. But he's expected to put his life on the line for you? That's ridiculous. But how is he putting his life on the yeah. line for me if they're breaking into a home where we both live at? <laughs> yeah. Like you're Her life's on the line, too. Like, what the fuck? This is such a dumbass argument. And you know it's dumb when, like, a lot of people in the chat are like, nah, dude, like... This is wrong. Like, they have some of the most, like, hardcore fans that say, like, they, they're they always right. So you know that this is, like, extra fucked up if a lot of people in the chat are disagreeing. You're defending yourself as well. You're not only oh. defending me. I'll hide under the bed. Like, yeah. go defend yourself. Run out. Do whatever you got to do. But like And that's the point is that you can't do it. Why not? You're as gonna a deal man, with the home invaders? well, as, as a, a man, woman? as a man yourself, if I said, "Oh, babe, I got it," most men will be like, "No, you don't. I got it. I'm gonna protect you because that's what that's just normal." But again, you're comparing somebody breaking into our home to me having to have sex with you when you come home from work. But like, what? Wait, no wait, 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 Whereas he's asking you for sex and temporary dis- Like, maybe once in a lifetime. Maybe. Maybe. This is just such a ridiculous argument. And he's defending himself and his kids, too. Like, oh, you don't give me sex? Okay. Well, here, you, yeah, just kill my wife. I don't care. Take the TV, kill my wife. She didn't fuck me anyways. Discomfort or you not wanting to do it at the time because I'm not feeling hot enough is you're making us think like I shouldn't have to be able to do this. And what I'm saying is that He's protecting you, putting you, uh, his life on the line for you. So he's obviously more but, involved. Uh, you are not mentioning what uh, a wife do for the is her husband. 
So you are like saying, okay, what man do, what man do, what yeah. man do? Like, it, like, and not in every household, girls do pay bills. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. ask you what your bills. opinion was. What if the man's not bringing paying the bills? What if he's not bringing that financial exactly. value? What if he doesn't they, have a higher status? Has the eighty percent of men's, you know, See, all but, men's hold relationship hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, right now? But what he's saying is, for example, if you stop the home invasion on your own, right, and he and he cowers and he runs away, the next day you will break up with him, right? And that's what he's trying to say. If we ro if someone robbed the house and I left you there to deal with it, you would break up with me the next day. You would divorce me. You'd be like, what the fuck? What I'm saying is that men should feel the same way when a girl doesn't want to give them sex. Now, I get what you're saying. What about for guys? I'm paying half the bills, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, that's an average guy. But most guys like that have their shit together, whatever. They're gonna cover everything, and what so I'm Miami, saying is most that most guys don't have their shit together. Right? You know, well, we're talking, we're, <laughs> we're talking, talking about, about guys talk, that have their shit together. This man is a celebrity paying all the bills for his wife and supporting her, yeah. and she ain't doing it. Wow. That's the problem. We're not talking about average guys that do 50-50. Listen, you want to do that 50-50 stuff? Then yeah, cool, that's negotiable. But most guys, like guys that have their shit together financially and are like a little bit more dominant, they're not pussies. Yeah, they're not gonna tolerate that BS. And the other thing, thing, thing too, is that like I said. If you're if you're not willing to give him the sex whenever he wants, that's cool. But understand that he's gonna get it from somewhere else. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you have to be cool with that because you don't want to do your job. So, and that's what it is. And ladies get mad when I say that, but men are success objects, and women tend to be looked at as sex objects. I know that's fucked up, but there's a reason why you guys can make five hundred dollars, you know, a day from selling feet pictures on OnlyFans, and we can't. Yeah, the issue here is leverage, and most guys, like you said, they're bums. Eighty percent, they have to go to work and they don't really cover all the bills. So matter of fact is you would never, you know, handle that, that situation the same way. However, we're talking about the top 10% of guys that are actually successful. They're doing their thing. Like the guy in the video. So Myron's saying, just, just to break it on even further, that if I'm going to put my life on the line, if I'm going to provide for the family, right? That's my obligation. Now, your obligation is obviously household chores, you know, taking care of the house, making sure the family's good. And you guys are very old what about What about a family? Huh? Mm, what about the family? No, these are traditional the, roles that, like, that men and women follow. If, if I have children, like okay, yeah. and I need to take care of my son or my daughter, yeah. and uh, my husband go to work, it's a 50 50, you know, because I'm a mother and uh, well, no, they, I take care of my that's two different son. roles, though. So, okay, but uh, are yeah. two roles, yeah. you know, different, yeah, for sure, but uh, two different roles, and if you come back home and say, No, I want to have sex, and I'm tired. It's okay. Yeah, like there's tomorrow. It's okay. There's okay. a shower for me. Okay. There's here's, the next day after. Here's, here's, no, but like you're problem, not right? going to die from you know, one night. Like here's the problem, though. I know a lot that of women I, say, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. And then they don't do it tomorrow. So the leverage is, is that a lot of women say, oh, yeah, babe, you know what? I'm tired today. I got a headache. I can't do it. And then weeks go by, days go by, and nothing happens. So I'm just saying. No, 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 no. That is not the argument they were making. They were saying. Anytime they want it, she can't say she's too tired or she's not in the mood because a man doesn't have the option to say he's too tired or not in the mood to protect her if an intruder breaks in. That's what Myron is saying anyways. This guy talking right now, he did say in the beginning, okay, maybe every now and then is okay, but... um. But the other guy said no. And he even said he won't even give her fore foreplay. I mean, there's just absolutely no compromising. And if if she says no, he's he that's why um men should have multiple women because sometimes their wives don't feel like having sex. And again, if it's like a common issue, if it's happening over and over and over again, then there's either some sort of issue you guys need to talk about or, or you know, there's a problem. I still don't condone cheating ever. You guys should talk about why she doesn't want to have sex. Is it a medical issue? Is it something in the marriage? Like, you know, there might be a problem there. But you can't expect her to always say yes every single time and if she doesn't that condones cheating and i mean can there be different levels like like hey, oh i'm too tired how about like a hand job or or something like that like 
Is there some kind of middle ground, maybe? I bet he wouldn't accept that either, though. If he won't even accept fucking foreplay. This is just dangerous to teach, like, preteens and young boys who, like, maybe even have never even had a girlfriend or have never had sex yet. And they're taking this in, like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, my girlfriend's duty to give me sex if I'm paying for dates and I'm buying her things and taking her out, she owes me sex. That's going to lead to an unhappy, angry, and just like abusive man. Hey. And there is a problem. If it was there, re- there yes, is a problem. No, 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 but, but, and but, 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 but. It was in reverse. And I said, you know what? I can't pay the bills today. Lights are off. I'm not going to no, take her to home. The, then that's a huge problem. The guess problem what? Is, You're going to leave me. So if you do it and the guy steps out, why is that a problem? Because once again, you're going to hold up your end of the bargain. I think that uh, the problem, if this happens, is between in the relationship. Holding up your part the of the bargain. People, you know, <laughs> if you have a, a oh woman God. with you that says, no. No, no. Every single day. Something, okay. mm-hmm. something is wrong. There is a problem, and What's, it's not a problem. What's the point of her being roles. there at that point? Oh, I, I have wife. my responsibility. I need to pay the bill. Is a problem between the, you know, and between that's why you said, and you as bad. And, and that's so why we said you, on the show, if she doesn't give you the sex, you need to break up with her because clearly she doesn't like or respect anymore. It's not about anymore. sex. See? Is not see, about sex. For it's many, it is. It is I, about prob- sex. I see, see. probably for the yeah. woman is not about sex. It's something else. It is. You know. No, but see, once again, right? Men don't leverage their responsibilities against you. Women leverage their body against men. So a matter. Of- Look, like this guy is asking, how often can they turn down sex? Like he's like really looking to this, like, like. He's going to take this like, okay, so um, like he's going to get into a relationship and say his girl like doesn't want to have sex. I don't know, a little bit more than like maybe he's young and she's young and she's new to sex. So like it might still hurt for her and stuff. And if she says no more than, you know, a couple times. He might cheat on her or he might try to force it on her or just say things to her like, like, you owe it to me. Like, this is not how, this is just not what we should be teaching. I mean, these guys are writing a book. I think the title of it is literally like, Modern Women Deserve Less or something like that. (laughs) Oh, God. Or fact, I get what you're saying, 100%. One day you might be tired, and I get that. But constantly doing it back to back, now that's a problem with, with, with you wrong. leveraging against him. And that's what most girls do. They say, you know what? If, if Johnny doesn't want to... And I'm 100% against women leveraging sex. They shouldn't say, oh, you want to have sex? Then you better do this. You better do that. I'm not going to have sex with you until you do this. That is toxic. That's abusive. That is not okay. I 100%... Do not condone that at all. But that's not what they're talking about here. Uh, buy me tickets to this concert. I'm not going to give him sex. If Johnny doesn't want to uh, take me out mm. to, for dinner dates tonight, I'll give him sex. And they leverage that against the guy for like a whole period of time. Now, when the guy steps up, goes to the strip club, get, and gets paid, uh, gets sex with a, a, a escort or whatever, now you're mad at him for stepping out. But once again, you leverage that whole period of time against him, and then you wonder why he cheats. That's that's all no, I'm saying. Yeah. Well, what if you are giving him everything he asked for and he still cheats? So what's what's the explanation there? We well, told you already, men don't cheat; they just all have right. sex. Yeah, that's cheating. All right, so having sex not. is cheating. You putting it's, your it's heart not. into Hold somebody on, else is cheating. No, like, it's it's not. You mentioned earlier that we're old school. I have a question for you. What mm-hmm. would you want in your husband if you were to get married? What do you mean? What I- men don't cheat; they have sex. That's great. That's great to teach guys too that men can't cheat. They just they just have sex. 
I want. I just well, want someone that's, res- that's going to respect res- me. Okay. We need some tangible things. What do they need to bring to the table if you are going to take a man seriously in a relationship and respect. possibly marry him? Literally, he needs to bring respect. Like, I can handle up on my own. I can, If I want something, I can go and get it. I can go work and get whatever I want. I don't have to depend on somebody to okay. do it. Does he have to earn at least as much money if no. you, as you, if no, not more? No, he doesn't. How old are you? Me? I'm 20. Okay, yeah, she's no life experience. Okay. That's actually, no, but it's funny because just because of a number, you're going to say that. Like, you don't really know what I've gone through. Like, you don't, you don't, Mm. like, it's real easy to judge just because I'm 20. Like, it's. No, no, no. no. But what I I am saying is that you're saying this right now because we're on a podcast and everything else like that, and you have to kind of hold the line. But the reality is, you are not going to date a guy that's below you socioeconomically or whatever it may be. You're going to want a guy at least that's your equal. Mm. And you're going to want a guy that's at least stronger than you. You're going to want a guy that's Can at least taller than you. Can you vouch for me, please? Because everybody thinks I'm I fucking know, lying here. Like, you, I mean, you're serious. Really not. I'm like, not lying. Her like, man, she really found like a one of a kind one. Like he's like, okay, crazy. Well, well, and it's not financially. It's yeah. not financial. It's not because he buys me the nicest cars. That I have the nicest house. It's none of that. It's literally respect. He literally mm. respects me. He's super okay, respectful. But, but did you not say earlier that you were in a relationship with a guy and you have a, you have a Bentley right now? No. That was my ex. I said that. If you could wear mine, I said yeah, my yeah, ex. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. Ch- but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But even goes more but to clearly, show. I had clearly, the Bentley and all the nice stuff and I still left it for somebody that's my <laughs> equal or under. Like, it doesn't matter. No, no, because no, no, he no. respects me and the Bentley guy didn't. Yeah. But like, the it, point is, is that you made a decision oh. to be with a man that had some means, correct? But you left him because he didn't respect you, right? Mm, not was, because he didn't respect me, it but was yes. Your choice. Okay. She just proved it was your choice. Point. So was choice? she proved him wrong. The man you chose. Yeah. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is you're saying that you guys are old school, right? Like, uh, I guess you want to say traditional. But what I am saying is that women tend to look for traditional things in men, right? You got you to speak right into it. <laughs> Right into it. <laughs> 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 it's like talking to the goddamn mic. The whole time he was like, speaking to the mic. Yeah. So, so yeah. Basically, you're saying that we want, um, we're old school, whatever. Women want traditional men too. You want a guy that makes more money than you. You want a guy that's taller than you. You want a guy that's stronger than you. You want a guy to protect you, whatever. The problem is that women want traditional men, but they don't want to be traditional women. Mm-hmm. Let's keep it a stack. You guys want to be modern when it suits you, but then you want to be traditional when it suits you. You want a guy to be a, a respectful, traditional man, right? I'm with him because he respects me. What Traditional characteristic, what right? What does he mean to but, you? Oh, can you let me finish? Uh, uh, right? But at the same time, you're saying, well, I don't want to adhere to traditional roles. I don't want to give him a uh, bedroom fun when he needs it or whatever it may be. I want to go find help. Yeah. The problem is this, ladies. And, and this is the trend that we've, that we've been trying to kind of have tonight. Dude, I... <laughs> I I guarantee you these traditional women did not have sex as often as modern day men um you know want or expect their their wives to have with them and actually true traditional women and men only have sex for the purpose of procreation. You don't have sex for um, self-pleasure, at least if you're traditional in a religious sense. Sex is meant solely for having babies. So, and also traditional, (laughs) traditional men don't cheat on their wives or get a prostitute if their wife, you know, isn't having sex with them three times a day and denying it a few times here and there. That's not traditional. See, the problem is these guys say these, and here's the other thing too. These guys say these things. Oh, if I want sex from you, you have to give it to me. Um, The next I'm going to play one more video after this, and then that's probably going to be the end of my live stream. But um, in the next video, they talk about um, uh, not being with a in a relationship and a wife being on a date and how even that date owes you sex, too. And for like if you take a girl to dinner, she owes you sex. And if not, you kick her to the curb. You call another girl in front of her. And he calls it um, competition anxiety. He calls a girl, another girl in front of her 
after she says, oh, no, I wasn't planning on sleeping with you tonight. And his um, idea is that the girl will be like, oh, he's kicking me out for another girl. And then it'll manipulate her to want to sleep with him. So um, so I'll play that clip next. It's not as long as this one. And that'll be the end of the live stream. But um, like that's not um, traditional. Oh, oh here, here was my point. The problem is they expect these women to have sex if, if they take them on a date and stuff. But then they also say that they will only marry um, a virgin woman or a woman with a very low body count, like under five or three guys in her life. So how are you going to go and tell women like, oh, I took you on a date? You know, it might be only our first date, but I bought you dinner and I gave you my time. You owe me sex. But then, but then you want to find a virgin wife. How are you going to find a virgin wife if you're telling women they owe you sex? <laughs> like, like all the time. Like that just doesn't <laughs> make fucking sense. And, and also saying that, um, you know, it's women can be only fans, models and porn stars and get sugar daddies. So they have it much easier in the workforce. It, it just, it makes no sense. And they say that women are the ones who have their cake and eat it too. <laughs> like you can't, you can't want to marry a virgin and then tell women that they also have to sleep with you if you go on a date with them. Okay. So this is almost over. With modern women, a lot of the time, they want a traditional man, but they don't want to necessarily be traditional women. They want to be modern women. They want to be career women, make money. I don't, I don't need a man's money, blah, 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 all this other stuff. But you can say these social constructs that are politically correct, that I'm equal and all this other stuff, but women don't want their equal, man. They want a guy that's higher than them. That's just, you guys are hardwired to be that way. That's why you dated a guy that had a Bentley for a bit, even though he disrespected you, because you understood on some primal level in the back of your mind, this guy's higher status. I'm willing to tolerate this disrespect to some degree because this man is higher status than I am. At some point, you had a breaking point. You said, fuck it, I don't want to be with him no more. But the point is, is that attraction isn't a choice, is what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, it is what it is. It's just that female roles are negotiable, male roles are static. You had something? What does it mean for you being a traditional <laughs> I know. woman? Like, I, I took a hit not long ago, uh, actually. You need to serve yeah. your man. But thank you. Thanks for coming Period. tonight. That's, that's, well, uh, that's, that is exactly why my last relationship ended, because... You guys don't like okay, you guys wanna just be materialistic and bring nothing else to the table, but then expect her to clean video. for you, cook for you, do this for you, do that for you, do this for you. Let's see. Just because you're paying for something. Like tell me you don't want to pay for it anymore and I'll pay for it. If if that's gonna make you like get off that cloud. It, well, here's the thing is that men have to bring tangible assets to a relationship, whereas women don't. Hold on, Myron. Let, let, let me just say one thing. I yeah. think the problem Let's they're having is a big semantics argument. They don't like the fact that that would be held over them, that they have to do those things. Because and, and if you ask her, I'm pretty sure she would not be a man where she she would not be with a man that she didn't have to work at all. Meaning that she had to rely 100 percent on his finances. I don't know what he's saying. The oh, hatred of women. That's not hatred of women. All right, let's go to this one. This is the last video I'm going to play. I'm not going to play the full thing. I'm just going to play a little bit of this, and then this will be the last of my live stream. It was a little bit long. Okay. Of course I've called a woman. Are you a misogynist? Before. No, but okay. I'm, saying, I'm saying, I'm trying to say that in that video, what you were doing is like, you it seems like your ego was so hurt that sh that w the girl didn't want to sleep with you that you have to go out of your way to call a woman in front of her just to make her feel bad and like you're you're talking you were talking about women in a way that you have to teach them a lesson if they don't want to sleep with you and it's just like why why can't a woman just not want to sleep with you because she doesn't want to sleep with you and, and that's okay but and there's consequences to, to that why consequences. should there be consequences if oh, i don't okay, want to sleep on, hold on. with you if 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 i don't if you don't want to sleep with me why should i continue to give you attention you you're just, not entitled to my time or my attention that's the problem so women you women are not entitled i'm going to say that again women are not entitled to a man's time attention or resources if she does not want to reciprocate on or on her end and give him sexual access you are not entitled to it and for a man to exert boundaries and say listen you got to get out 
and or call another woman in front of her, it doesn't matter. You no longer want to give what the man wants. He's within his right to kick you out any way he sees fit, just like you are within your right to withhold sex from him. Like there you just chat. said, you just said there should be consequences if a woman there's doesn't a want to sleep with one. you. That yes. is so, so troubling. Like How's that, that troubling? is just you don't see how that's weird? Like that's just exactly. weird. So it's okay for you to have multiple dates with a guy. Consequences? Oh, hold on, hold on. It's okay for you to go on multiple dates with a guy, right? Pip him pimp pip everything. And you never sleep with him. That's okay too, right? Wait, I'm so, sorry. Is he entitled to having sex with me just because he takes me on dates? No, I'm saying if you go multiple dates with a guy, right? Yeah. And you feel like, you know what? I don't want to give, give him sex. That, that's okay, right? I think you should I do know, whatever right? you want to do on guys. And like sexually, if you don't want to have sex with a man after five dates, you don't have to. Perfect. So if he wants to call a girl in front of you, uh, that's his prerogative, right? Of course. I'm just saying the he was saying to do that as a consequence because that is that's the... Like that's to shame yeah to woman? shame a woman well, it's because oh because you're not having sex with me well, i'm gonna call someone and make you feel some type of way yes it's because like, because the uh, consequence is him calling a girl you know what i'm saying so it's like the same thing as, as a girl you know punching a guy from the out of sex punching a guy you no pu punishing. punishing oh punishing a guy the, the so, point is is that it's okay for women to withhold sex from men with zero consequence but it's not okay to kick out girls and or hold them to some kind of consequence when they don't want to give sex to be a chat I don't know you how can to do get whatever it out, you want. Exactly. I just think right. the in the video that I'm talking about, you guys are saying it in a very disrespectful way, saying that there should and like you just said, there should be consequences if she doesn't want to sleep with you. It's like at the end of the day, I'm sorry, guys, Look you're not this. entitled to your body, like regardless cool. how many and you're not you entitled on. to a man. Hold on, let me read some of these comments real quick. I'm 13, and these guys make perfect sense. How do these grown women not see it? This woman's argument, such double standards. If a woman doesn't get what she wants, she will be quick to leave. She's arguing her point off of an emotional reaction. She doesn't like the fact that Myron is telling guys to have options and don't be scared to work those options. She doesn't sound stupid. She is. The gaslighting with her was strong. Good job staying on point. <sighs> it's just, it's scary. She doesn't care about the man's feelings by making him feel bad, turning him down. What, we don't have feelings? Idiots. Are you serious? So... <laughs> But so women just have to say yes because because we're going to feel bad for turning you down. There's actually a lot of women who do have pity sex because they don't know how to say no and turn a guy down. And because some guys are so persistent and get like – I literally had one guy say to me one time um, – it was literally like 5 in the morning – I think we did like Molly like all night. We hadn't slept. I was so tired. I had something to do in the morning. I had to drive like 45 minutes home. And I finally lay down and he like lays down with me and he's like, oh, I'm just so horny. And then I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just like really tired. Like, there's no way I can like do anything right now. And he's like, he like got upset and he was like, ugh. Are you seriously going to make me, like, jerk off in the shower? Like, oh, I guess I'll just go to the shower now. Like, and then he was like, are you seriously going to make me do that? And he, like, got upset about it. I've had guys, like, <laughs> one time I got kicked out because um, I got kicked out of this, like, small house party because my friend didn't sleep with this guy he was she's she slept with him before in the past and again it was like super late at night we were up partying we just laid down and he made me drive home drunk because we weren't allowed to um sleep the night because she uh said she didn't want to have sex with him that night he kicked us out it's just it's crazy like 13 year old boys are reading this and and think this makes 100% sense. That is scary.
it's time. Yeah, and it if sounds, you, yeah, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I've it been talking too rapey. much. I get what you're saying, but he probably didn't mean it in that way. Um, but it does sound no, a little rapey. No, no, just no, a little bit. No, 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 no. Yeah. See, th this is and this is the thing. I've never heard of Courtney Ryan. I'm going to look her up. Is that a woman? I'm, I'm supposing. I'm gonna look her up. I've never um heard of her. What kind of uh? Is she is she more red pilled or is she more, um, like on the same mindset as what I'm talking about? Man, and this is and this is why this podcast is so important. Yep, guys, this is this is the reality of the world. Women want to be able to exercise the discretion to give you sex anytime they see fit. But they don't want you to exercise the discretion to withdraw attention and or time at any time you see fit when you no longer get what you want. That's not what I'm saying. No, I, I literally said she doesn't want to give me sex. She's got to leave. But you guys have a problem with that when I say there's consequences. Just like like it, it just. It, no, I'm saying the manner in which you're going about it and saying that women have to be like I said, like have to be punished. Like there's consequences because yes. you don't want to have sex with me that I have to make you feel bad because you don't want to have sex. I'm going to skip forward to that video that, that she's behavior. referring we're talking to. about women as if we're like these dogs that have to be submissive and like trained into being these submissive yes. um, creatures that, you know, it's like, it's just come down. Oh. I'm still trying to figure oh. out. So this is the initial video that she's talking about that she brought up that she, you know, that was wrong. One here. Was it this one? Yeah. Uh, no, it, no. I don't want to have bedroom fun. Yeah, that one. Is that one it? On left, on left, left I hand side, Chris. think I'm not sure. That one, yeah. Is this one it? Yeah. Play. All right. Uh, there we, this is it. This is it, right? When a girl's at your crib and she says, oh, I don't want to have any bedroom fun. <laughs> totally cool. You can't get mad. You basically get up, say, all right, no problem. And you're going to go call another girl. Okay. And then what's going to happen is she's going to hear you talking to another girl competition anxiety spikes and then you're going to come back and you're going to tell her, listen i respect your boundaries i understand you don't want to have any bedroom fun but i got my needs and i'll see you later and you tell her to leave simple as that guys never ever let a girl leverage bedroom fun against you to try to get some compliance she's within her right to not give you the fun but you're within your right to get the fun from somebody else mm. don't be stupid don't chase replace <laughs> Okay, okay. okay. What's horrible play? that was misogynistic? Yeah. Please tell me, because that to me makes common sense. If I don't, if you don't want to have sex with me, cool. It's in your right. You can leave if you want to. But guess what? I got my rights as well. I didn't want to get laid. Hey, Susie, what's up? Come of through. Course. The problem is, you need to be upfront about it. There's a part in this video where he also explains that you can't. Be upfront with women before the date and tell them that you're just looking for a hookup because then women, you know, women are so indirect and you can't just be upfront with them. They won't go. So you have to like lie to them and tell them that, you know, you're serious and you want to take them out on a date and blah, 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 blah. No, if you are not being upfront and saying like, yo, like, I'm just looking for a hookup. Like, I'll take you to dinner, you know. We'll go out for something nice, but like I'm I am looking for a hookup. Um if you tell her that to begin with, and then at the end of the night she's like, No, I mean, yeah, I can see you being like, Okay, well, I'm gonna call somebody else then. But like if you're not being upfront and you're just being sneaky about it and you bring this woman on this date with you and then tell her like so like we're gonna have sex and she's like no i'm i'm don't want to like you know i don't have i don't sleep with guys on the first date and then you just you know throw her out and call another girl in front of her like that is so fucked up and i and once again how do these guys expect to find virgin wives and while they're meanwhile they're telling women that if you go on a date with a guy you have to have sex with him or or else you're just useless to him it's not possible so 
All right, let me find if I can find that one part. And if I can't find it, I'm just going to end the live here. What's um, so what is misogynistic yeah, about that of video? Of course, no, you have your right to... Right? Here's the thing. I can't choose how a woman feels. It's fine. That if I call another you know. girl, it's called competition anxiety, which means other girls want guys that other women want to be with. They're they're able to leverage sex against men for competition. Like the guy, and let's say like you said, you've been dating for a long time. Go work in the morning. I no, gotta go home early. You you don't have to do that. Cuddling and the whole thing. That's oh, fuck. And that's the problem that women have here. You went to the extent of calling me a misogynist. Misogynistic mm -hmm. tendencies, which I think. If I'm if I'm out uh, to go right, and obviously I know what I want. She knows what I want. Why even come to my room? Like I'm just saying. Look, yeah. If you don't, if you're not into the guy, if you're not into that. Understand. It's it's your choice. You can mm -hmm. walk away. Say you know what? This is fun. I gotta go home. It was nice meeting you. Yeah. It's done. Right there is done. Mm -hmm. But I go to this spot and then be like, all right, I don't know, you know, da da da. W what is that? Like, just just don't show up. Sometimes people don't like to give everything the first time they meet someone because that's stick. For everything, when for every is open about it. There's okay. So I don't know if I can find it right now. So I'm just gonna end the live here. But my final thoughts are. I guess I can see if he invites you back to his house and you go, that can be seen as making a move. But honestly, it depends because like when I was first dating, like when I was younger, like I had, I never had a one night stand until like, honestly, way later than most girls, I think like relatively from the women I've spoken with like I had only slept with boyfriends so when I would go out on dates once I was single like I have guy friends and shit and and I was looking at these guys as more than friends but if they would invite me back to their place like I thought we would like hang out get to know each other and you know like, like we could watch a movie cuddle make out and stuff but to like to expect me to have sex with you like and i guess it also depends on like how old because i was like pretty young like i i was like under 21 um and i mean there are a lot of guys under 21 watching this so like if they're taking this advice like i just don't think that's that's right and there are certain times like where you can tell if a guy like just one sex i just think you should be up front with it if you are expecting to have sex before like that's what you want out of the date that's the only thing you want out of the date the only thing you want you should be up front and tell her be like yo i'm looking for a hookup and if you don't tell her then that's on you and you shouldn't be disrespectful and treat her like shit because you weren't able to just be upfront and honest with her and you were being like sneaky about it so that's my last thought she does seem to give good basic dating and self-improvement advice i think she is red pilled in some issues she doesn't seem to be fond of modern feminists but i need to see more videos of her cool yeah i'll check her out um i know i've seen just pearly things which is totally red pilled <laughs> she has me so triggered oh my god i'm doing actually a pre-recorded video of her um with the episode where andrew tate made an appearance on her show just before his arrest so that's going to be my next pre-recorded video that i release um but yeah there is just i just think there's so much toxic Mis like and misinformation they're putting out on here and the reason i'm just so triggered by it is because of the large audience and the young audience um you know that takes this information in and um it doesn't help anyone so so thank you guys for being here it's my first live so it ended up being like three hours long <laughs> um but thank you so much for being here and bearing with me through any technical difficulties. I appreciate it so much. And um, yeah, feel free to, uh, oh, I don't know, comment suggestions or something like that, like video suggestions or whatever. I'm going to look up that 
that woman um, that you told me about. And have a good night, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.